You are now rocking with the hottest boxing podcast in the land. True Media Boxing Radio with your host, Coach Malachi Williams. True, true, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, what's up, what's up, family? This is our boy, Coach Malachi Williams in the building. And we back. True Media Boston Radio, we are back, we are back, we are back. Uh, we're going to have a damn good show today. Happy to be back to the crib. <laughs> man, I'm telling y'all what I'm saying, boy. I'm happy to be back, be back to the crib, man. Um, it is what it is, man. Um, just happy to have everybody, you know, the family here. You know what I mean? We're going to have a great show. Y'all know how we do it. Yesterday was a little hiccup. You know what I mean? I was stranded on death row in the airplane, but I, I'm not complaining. I'd rather be... You know, rather be safe. You know, you'd rather be safe in situations like that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you want to be safe at all times, but you know, it is what it is, man. Um, try not to complain about a whole lot of stuff. You know, just try not to complain about a whole lot of stuff. It is what it is, man. Just be grateful. You know, so, uh, you know, so, anyways, shout out to everybody in the chat. Shout out to Demetrius. Put the mic down some. Shout out to Demetrius. What's going on, fam? Demetrius in the building. Isaiah Gonzalez. Shout out to Gertz. Salute to Tila. What's going on, sis? Uh, shout out to L. Harvey in the building. Uh, salute to Stephen X. I mean, Stephen 47. Shout out to, uh, who else we have? Oh, I'm on Discord. I got my Discord going off. I'm getting that, I'm getting this gaming stuff set up too, man. I'm trying, I'm trying, boy. I'm trying, I'm dead ass. I'm dead serious about that gaming, bro. You can believe that. True, true, true. Yeah, I'm dead serious about that gaming, boy. I'm trying to tell you, but I'm trying to make it, boy. I'm trying to make it do what it do. Anyways, um, Got to get my server built. Shout out to, uh, in my opinion, in the building, Knockdown 305, what's going on? Daniel Agnew, uh, Teela's in the building, uh, L. Harvey. Shout out to uh, William Zamora. The villain, is in this, the, the villain is here as well. Hey, you know what I was sitting there laughing at? I finally got a chance to listen to some of the, uh, the interview. Shout out to uh, Stephen X. Listen to some of the interview of Samson Lewitz. And Nessa Gills was asking some really good questions. He was pressing them. Y'all know how Ness do it. About Crawford and um, you say Crawford is boring. He ain't no draw. He won't, you know. He, he praised Floyd Mayweather for being a smart businessman and all this stuff there, and Canelo for being a smart businessman. Yeah, but Crawford, he trying to be a businessman. See, he, he can't be being no businessman. See, that ain't gonna work in Boston trying to be a businessman. And I'm like, okay, so you praise Floyd for being a great, great businessman. You know, you praise Canelo. Yeah, but see, Crawford, see, he can't do that. See, he ain't neither one of them. No one said he was them. You don't have to be a Canelo or a Croft or a um, or a uh, uh, Floyd to be a good businessman in boxing. They want they want a fighter. See, D promote. He told them they want a fighter to just to be an old slave. It doesn't matter who it is, black, white. It doesn't matter what the color is. They just, yeah, man, you just take what we give you and do what we tell you to do. And then they talking about all these rumors. Well, he want he he want this. He want that. And that's like, how do you know? Did you hear that from him? Oh, no, that's what I heard. What type of promoter you is? Well, I heard it what he want. Sir, do you have any actual facts? Did you speak to him? No. Did you speak to anyone on his team? No. Did you speak to his attorney, any of his representative, his attorney? I mean, when I say his team, I mean his attorney. No, I ain't speak to the attorney, but I heard that what he want. You can't make this up. I say this duck language. True, true, true. Samson, boy, listen, boy. Uh, I'm trying to figure out who lied more, Samson Lewis. Samson Lewis probably might be the biggest liar in boxing. 
He might be like when I sit back and think about it, he might be the, probably the biggest like like I think he's a manager, right? Samson Lewis is a piece of shit. Like literally, only thing he's only thing he's good for is to wipe it, is to wipe your ass with his face and flush him down the goddamn toilet. Like literally, you get what I'm saying? So certified fuckboy. I see why Canelo fans. I see why Canelo fans hate that motherfucker now. You know, I didn't. I, I, I didn't really know too much about Samson Lewis. I never really listened to him. But I see why Canelo fans hate that motherfucker. I see why. Anyways, uh, shout out to Stephen X, Salute Fam, Daniel Agnew, Knockdown 305, my sister Lisa Bell's uh, sports predictions. What's going on? We're gonna have uh, Stitch Duran will be coming on the show in a few minutes. So I just want to get into the show, man, and just go from there. We're gonna have Stitch Duran come on. Um, I met Stitch in Vegas. For all you don't know, I met the brother in Vegas. Um, you know, um, at the TFPMO Lopez, Jermaine Ortiz fight, met him in Vegas. We talked, had a really good conversation and, uh, exchanged numbers and he did, he gave me his word. He said, man, just reach out to him. I will come on your show. He's just been real busy. He's been very, very busy and, uh, got to catch him when you can because Stitch has a lot going on. You know, he, he might be the busiest cut man in boxing. Like even when he was doing other podcasts last week, I couldn't get him because he was, he was busy doing other podcasts, but then he was, you know, busy with his schedule as well, so he had other commitments. So finally, we're going to get him on. Uh, shout out to Superman in, in this BI. Shout out to um, the inevitable D Block. Salute to uh, who else we have? Sheila from Cali, True Culture, Mr. Tomato Can. <laughs> he said, Mr. Tomato. <laughs> shout out to Javon Soto. He said, Mr. Tomato Can. <laughs> I like that. Shout out to Bob Squad. To this day. Bob Squad, what's going on, fam? Bob Squad, man. You know, Eric. Eric Gomez, what's going on, brother? Hey, hey, every time I see you, you know I got I gotta give you a wild I gotta give you a wilder, I gotta give you a wilder sound bite. What he says we don't believe. It is what it is. I say what I say and I deliver it. Man, shout out that man. Hey, shout out. <laughs> hey, you get what I'm saying? Hey, you get what I'm saying? Well, you know, I guess I gotta be like everybody else and sing Al Heyman. Really though. You just sit here, you don't know what I'm talking about. Bar squad. To this day. <laughs> Hey, I swear to God, bro. Hey, every time I hear that to this day, I never get tired of hearing that, bro. But, 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 but listen, Bob, Bob, I mean, uh, Deontay Wilder, man. Let me tell you something, man. I, I, you know what? I, I know I went to war with a lot of, a lot of the wild dads out there, the Torquenator army. But all jokes aside, Wild, Wilder is hilarious. Deontay Wilder is hilarious. He's very, very funny. Anyway, let's get into the show. Full Stitch, come on. Um, let me read my opening monologue, and then we'll go from there. Now, Stitch Duran reveals what went wrong, what went wrong in the Tim Zoo versus Fendora fight. A lot of boxing fans, and I've been looking at a lot of people's chat, so chat so I know. A lot of boxing fans, you know, uh, feel that Tim Zoo was cheated, especially Tim Zoo fans. You know, they feel that Tim Zoo was cheated. You know, uh, he was cheated out of victory in his fight with Sebastian Fendora. It was obvious after watching the fight. Because remember, I didn't see the fight at first. I just saw the highlights. But, but then I finally got a chance to sit down and watch the fight. And yeah, it was obvious. If, if, if he don't get that cut on his head, uh, Fendora be sleep. The fight that happened the way I predicted it, it would have happened. I say, look, the man, ain't, he's not defensively sound. He doesn't have a good defense. He's slow. Um, he's very slow. And, uh, yeah, you know, so, so you know, uh, that's what's going to happen to him. And if, if, if he don't get that cut, then, you know, uh, he don't get that cut on his head. And that fight don't go six rounds. He'll be out. Of, he'll have been out of there in probably like five. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of boxing fans feel that Tim Zoo was cheated in his victory last week against Sebastian Fendora. It was obvious after watching the fight, and I told you guys I got a chance to look at it, uh, that Tim Zoo, uh, that Tim Zoo had the fight in the bag. In my opinion, it looked like he had it in the bag. You know, had it not been for that incidental elbow that hit him on, I think he hit him on the forehead or, or top of the head and the forehead or something of that sort. If it wasn't for the cut that he received from the for, for the from the elbow, he I think he would have had that fight in the bag. That's just my assumption. I could be wrong, but that's just my assumption. Uh, most boxing experts and fans say that this fight should have been stopped. A lot of people say this fight should have been stopped. Uh, most feel Tim's corner let him down as well. I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask Stitch about that. A lot of people feel that his corner let him down. You know, shout out to uh, shout out to people watching on Twitter. Shout out to people watching on Instagram. Um, a lot of people feel that way. You get what I'm saying? Most boxing experts and fans say that the fight should have been stopped. Um, most feel Tim's corner let him down as well. So I decided to ask the legendary Stitch Duran, it's coming on the show, uh, what he would have done differently had it been him working Tim Zoo's corner. And what can Tim, uh, what can Tim Zoo do moving forward in his next fight? 
We're hearing that he's not going to be back until November or something of that sort. And I'm hearing from Doris not going to be back till September. Yada, 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 right? So we're going to see what's going to happen with the WBO belt and all that stuff there. We know what the WBC going to do. They're going to let him ride out and hold on to it till whenever. We know that. We ought to know that because, you know, PBC has – there's two sanctioned bodies that they pretty much control. They control the WBA and they control the WBC. We know that for a fact. You get what I'm saying? So it is what it is. That's how these sanctioned bodies operate. Uh, so what what what, what the teams will be able to do going forward? Um, and also that's what I want to know in this next fight. He's going to have another fight. And, and, and the reason why I say that is because if people feel that his team has let him down, do you feel that, hey, man, we got to make sure he get a different cut, man. He got to switch some things up. Uh, you know, his trainers. I don't know. You get what I'm saying? So it just, it, that, this was a high stakes fight. Still don't know what the pay-per-view numbers are for this fight as well. So let me, let me hit up Rick Glazer right quick. Text him right quick. Uh, hold on. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, guys. You know, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm texting Rick Glazer right now. All right, asking him a question. Um, you know, we go, we gonna see what Dan Raphael and Mike Carpenter and them say. You know, we know Dan. You know, Dan's pretty much a PBC guy, so we gonna we gonna see what we gonna see what he say. We gonna find out exactly what he say. You get what I'm saying? So um, they might wait till Rick put his numbers out, and then this is what they'll probably do. They are gonna wait till Rick put that put put his number out, and then they are gonna say, "Oh man, you know he lying, man, man. You can't believe nothing he say." You get what I'm saying? Okay, what the numbers here? Oh, well, we don't know what the numbers here, but we know it ain't that. So you know, we know how it is. And you ought to know you you ought to know you ain't gonna get no much. You ought to know you ain't gonna get no numbers from Booger Ray. Now Booger Ray did use Rick Glazer's numbers last numbers last time. When he said uh, uh, Tank Davis, not Tank Davis, but uh, uh, Devin Haney did 50,000, him and Regis Progress sold 50,000 pay-per-view buys. So he took that number. Yeah, he only did 50,000. That's what Booger Ray said. But as soon as he say, say a number, no matter how true it is that he don't agree with, he going to take, he goes, oh, man, I can't believe nothing that guy said. So we, we know what it is. We know what that is. Shout out to School of X-Men. Salute to you, fam. Uh, the villain say 300,000 pay-per-view buys. Yeah, 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 okay, all right, we gonna. I, I seriously doubt that, but I think you way, I think you way off on that, the villain. But you know, it, you know, keep, keep hope alive, though. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Um, some of these guys gonna act like pay per view numbers don't matter. When it when when it comes down to the fighters that they hate, pay per view numbers are everything. He ain't no star. But when it comes down to the fighter that's with this with the promotion of the company that they like, oh man, the, what, what, the, the pay per view don't matter. I get it. They, they listen, listen. These niggas, these niggas talk on both sides of the coin. You know, heads, they got a, as uh, what, 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 uh, uh, what, um, Bill Haney say, it, it's no, it, what could you say, coin flip Kenny? The, the, the coin, listen, if it's, if it, if it's, if it land on heads, it did 300,000 plus. If it land on tails, we ain't gonna flip it over. It, 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 it did, it did the 50,000 or so. But what people don't know, but he got a coin that got two, that got two heads on the side. A two-headed coin. You get what I'm saying? Hold on now. We ain't going to do that. You get what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, man. It is what it is, man. Anyways, anyway, before we get into the show, y'all know how we do it. We got to say all praises due to the most high, the most exalted, the greatest human being on the planet Earth. What they call the guy? Mr. Al Heyman. Well, you know, I guess I got to be like everybody else and saying Al Heyman. <laughs> I can quit my job now, baby. Six figures, baby. You feel me? I'm about to but, but a name, a name. Do you have a name? Oh, nah, nah. I ain't got no name, you know? Name them names, man. They know who they is. Name them names, they they please. The names need to be named. They know who they is. <laughs> the Mexican monster. Man, y'all, y'all ought to know what time it is. Let's get, let's get uh, everybody that's in the chat a round of applause. You get what I'm saying? Y'all know what time it is. You already know what's gonna be said. We, we know. We waiting on it. One thing, one thing I will say. You watch these guys long enough. All of them are predictable. All of them, you know, it's like I've been watching these side guys long enough. I put them as know what, uh, and then Samson Lewis, oh, my God, I listen to him. I'm like, man, this guy here, man, like he he alive one minute, and then, uh, and then that suppress him. Say, wait a minute, you just lied right here. This this what you said two minutes ago. You said this. Oh, yeah, well, um, yeah, well, well what I was saying was, I said, damn, this dude here is, is, oh, this dude is a certified shit eater for real. Lord have mercy. Anyway, shout out to Robert Digital. Shout out to Lindell Frazier. It is what it is. If you're sitting there watching the show, hate watching, and I do have some hate watchers, don't want to hit the like button, Riley, get him. Look, fuck you. Fuck the plane you flew in on. 
Fuck them shoes. Fuck the socks with the bell on it. Fuck them cheap ass cigars. Fuck your yuck mouth teeth. Fuck your hairpiece. Fuck your chocolate. Fuck Guy Ritchie. Fuck Prince William. Fuck the Queen. This is America. My president is black and my Lambo is blue, nigga. Now get the fuck out my hotel room. And if I see you in the street, I'm slapping the shit out of you. You get what I'm saying? So, it, so you get what I'm, you get what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Uh, somebody said, "Did you hear about the rematch?" Man, I, man, shit, man, that man, that man don't lie about so much shit, dog. I don't know which one you talking about. You talking about Fandor and Tim Zoo? That man don't lie about so much shit, dog. After the fight, it wasn't a rematch. It was just a verbal agreement. Then now after, anyways, I, I'm not even. I told you, I'm not emotionally invested in this shit like that. To be honest with you, so it is what it is. I see the game. I know what's going on myself. I see it. I know what it is. Um, these guys are very. They're making it very clear what the play is. So it is what it is, you know. These motherfuckers lying, ducking, cherry picking, lying, ducking, cherry picking. You know, um, that's what a promoter. That's what promoters do, though. You know, you can't. If you're looking for an honest, if you're looking for an honest promoter or an honest manager <laughs> in boxing, I mean, you know, I'm not saying that there there aren't any honest managers, but if you're looking for, li listen, looking for a promoter or a manager. Or whoever it may be, right? I'm talking about those higher ups. Looking for them, looking for them to tell you the truth. It's like looking for a Democrat or a Republican to be to tell you the truth. Try to get some honesty out of a, out of a Democrat politician or a Republican. It's like you ain't gonna get that. It's like trying to get. It's like trying to get an attorney or a prosecutor to tell you the truth. Their job is to lie. They, these guys are professional liars. You get what I'm saying? So. I'm not going to get emotionally invested in any goddamn thing. I just wait till I see it. Cause what you see, what you, what you see it and, and see it in, in, on, on TV and stuff like that, then it, then you know what it is. But I'm not even getting all emotionally invested in this shit, man. We've been busy arguing with niggas all day about millionaires and who lying and saying this and saying that. This shit ain't even, it ain't even worth, it ain't even worth my goddamn time. I'm going to get my blood pressure high for that shit. Shout out to G5. G5, what's going on fam? Knock down 305, Daniel Agnew. Daniel Agnew. You get what I'm saying? Shout out to Pauline. Shout out to uh, Spa City. Spa City, what's going on, fam? Um, let's see who else we have. Uh, Crack Stream TV. Salute, fam. NPR. He say um, scams and oh oh oh. That <laughs> NPR say scams and be be flip flopping. Hey, that's a good one, fam. Scams and scams and Lewis, bro. That's a good one, bro. I ain't never heard of that one. Scams and. Knockdown say janky promoters. Absolutely. True, true, true. Yeah, man. See, he can't be. Yeah, he trying to. He trying to do business. See, he don't know what he doing. The man got a net worth of eight figures. How he don't know what he doing? Nah, she. He thinking. He thinking. He Florida or Canelo. Ain't nobody said that. That's what you saying. Oh, so you. That's what you saying. What type? Listen. Let me show you. Let me show you how ignorant this fool is. This. This. How dumb this guy is. This guy come on the Boxing Boys syndicated show, and he sit back and say, "Yo, man, I heard that this dude won't do. I heard that he won't that. Like, who talks about what you heard, sir? You've been in the game a long time. This is how you know the bullshit. You're pushing a narrative and you're putting out false propaganda. So let's say, did you talk to Crawford? No, I ain't talked to him. Did you talk to his attorney? Anybody on the team? No, I ain't talked to him. Where did you hear that from? Oh, that's what I heard." <laughs> That's like me saying, that's like me saying, yeah, man, I heard Superman. I heard Crash Screen TV. I heard he said he wanted $10 million just, just, to be, just, just to come on my show. Uh, where did you hear that at, Coach? Did you hear from, did you hear from uh, Crash Screen? No, I ain't heard from Crash Screen. Did you talk to any of Crash Screen representatives? No, I ain't talked to any representatives. Where did you hear that from? No, I, that, that, that's just what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. Well, I said, this nigga just making shit up. He just pulling shit out his ass right now. You get what I'm saying? The man just lying, making shit up. Hey, shout out to Nate. Nate, what's going on, sis? Shout out to my sister, Nate. Shout out to Tila. Shout out to school old X-Man in the building. Uh, uh, shout, shout out to Miss, Miss Connie. Bro, like literally, <laughs> literally. So I say, now I see what Canelo fans talking about. This dude just be making shit up. Yeah, we yeah we sent Canelo fifty five million dollar contract guarantee, and he turned it down. And I'm like, damn, for real? <laughs> so Canelo turned down fifty five mil? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, it, it, it's coming from Samson Lewis. Let me tell y'all something. Anything Samson Lewis say is a lie. Just remember that. You can't believe nothing that dude say. I don't know where he from. 
Anything that guy says is a lie. Just know that. And I don't care what it is. He can say, you know, it's raining outside. You can physically see the rain falling from the sky. You could be outside and the rain is falling down on your head and your shirt getting wet. Guess what? Man, I, I, I don't believe it. Dude, you, you are in the rain getting wet. Why do you believe it? Because Samson said it. True, true, <laughs> true. What did he say? Scampson. 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 <laughs> Scampson Lewis. Hey, he think, hey, he think, uh, he think, uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> Scampson. Scampson. Hey, I like that name now. Scampson Lewis. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Y'all know what type of T.I. is. We finna get ready to get into the show, man. When it comes to this boxing, you already know. Yep, that's right. I'm running things. I'm running things. Cream corn. That's why they call me that. Smooth. I got more measure for your pleasure. Stick with me, baby. I'll have you farting through silk. <laughs> and let a nigga mess with me. I'll jump on him. All 93 pounds of pure dynamite. Hey, you know what? Hey, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Right? I was I was sitting back listening to um somebody sent me something. Right? You guys you guys know what I be telling y'all about? I'm not fix, fixing to be arguing. I'm not going to be arguing with these goddamn beta males online about multi millionaires. These niggas ain't got no money in their pocket. You can't get no female. A woman don't want you because you know a real woman a real woman want a man who bringing something to the table and a man want a woman who brings something to the table. It got to be something that you guys can come together as a unit and really make something happen with. You get what I'm saying? Like uh. Let me see, let me see. Man, anyways, anyways, anyways. Uh, I just got a text from Rick Glazer. He said them pay-per-view numbers gonna be shaking like booty meat. Anyways, anyway. I want I want y'all, I want y'all, I want y'all to hear this though. Let me know, let me know if you guys can hear this. Let me know if you guys can hear this. This this is from this is from Young Thug. This is not Young Thug. This is from Slim Thug out of Texas. This is from Slim Thug out of Texas. I want you guys to see this. This is Bro, I'm like, this dude, this dude is spot on. This is the same shit I be talking about. About these, about these emotional. Now, I want you guys to listen to this and then think about these niggas online on boxing. Now, I'm pretty sure this goes on in other chats, but I'm but I'm specifically talking about boxing. I want you women to listen to this and understand these are the type of men. Oh, I can't even call them men, but these are the type of boys that you're dealing with online in boxing. I want y'all, I want y'all, I want y'all to hear this. This here boy, he spot on, he's spot on in this. Hold on. He is spot on. Where, 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 where he at? Where he at? There, oh, here he go right here. Here he go right here. Yeah, shout out RP to Young Dog. Yeah, what he say? What young, what young dog say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, God damn. Yeah, yeah. Really oh, emotional. A lot of niggas who think they gangsters is really emotional niggas. They really like niggas who be in their feelings. A lot of, if you mad at a nigga enough to want to shoot him, that's an emotional thing. That's very emotional. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a very emotional thing. Like, I can't even care about no nigga. Like, with my mindset of how I'm trying to teach y'all, I can't even care about a nigga enough to want to harm him and risk going to jail. I'm too valuable for that. You know what I'm saying? The world too big for me to risk my life going to jail for a nigga who is one person, one little dot in this whole big ass universe. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to be around this person. You don't have to fuck with this person. But you never want to take yourself out the game for a lane. A nigga who talking, who just emotionally charged. A nigga who just having a wild, a nigga who might be slow. You might be at the club arguing with the slow nigga from the other hood because he did some dumb shit and you just let that take you. You are standing on manhood and you end up going to jail for smoking a slow nigga. And you was a whole king to your hood. It's that fast, it's that easy because you get caught up in fast emotions. And when you realize that's a woman trait more than a man trait, you bag up off that shit. I'm 43 now, so you can't get me out of character, nigga. So, hey, it's amazing because I'm like, this dude is saying that somebody sent this to me, and I'm like, this is the same shit I was just telling y'all. This same shit he said, got it. Huh. Hold on, this 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 right here. Hold on, let me let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Hold on, 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 hold on,
Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me let me call Stitch. Let me call him. Let me call him, guys. Bear with me. Yo, brother. Hey, Stitch, how you doing, brother? I'm oh, good. I'm trying to get the thing in there. Let me see. I might get it. Do, do you, do, hold on. Are you trying to use it on your phone or are you trying to do it on the computer? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the computer. Okay, I tell you, if you're trying to do it on the computer, send me your email and I'll and I, and I send it to you, your email, so you can just click on it. You not to, You shouldn't have to type I, anything. I, I, I only got Safari, if that's all right. Safari is fine. Okay. All right, send it to me. All right, just give me your email. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, send me an email. All right. Yeah, I'm waiting on I'm waiting on Stitch. Stitch gotta send me the email. Yeah, so um, uh, but you but you but you but you but you get what I'm saying though? Like, they're like, yeah, nigga, sign the contract. Shut up. I got shooters. You better not come to the fight. You the bitch. You the bitch. I tell her when I see you, I'ma do this and that. Like when you like this is what you're dealing with. When you see when you see these grown ass niggas in their forties, like these niggas be in their forties. It ain't just young dudes. Like, again, I told you guys this. You don't you don't you don't never let a chump play you out of pocket. Never let a chump play you out of pocket, right? Because that's what these chumps are for. These niggas on these niggas on YouTube, that's what they're for. You know, uh, these are overly now these dudes ain't gonna do nothing. I can damn that guarantee you that they ain't gonna do nothing because they 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 not they not they don't have no you know you know they they it, it ain't gonna go no further than than that. But then what a nigga yelling and screaming on on the computer. But what I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to show you, is uh this is what these guys do. You don't let no chump play you out of pocket. As I said, we, we spoke about this Friday. I said, dude, when you got a family and you got a lot on the line, it's going to take a whole, it should take a whole lot for a nigga to get you there. Now, once he gets you there, it's a done daughter. Once he gets you there, it's a done daughter. But some of these dudes, you know, they, I'm saying if you out in the street, again, on YouTube boxing, you don't have nothing to worry about. These guys in soft as cotton candy, they ain't going to do nothing. I, I can promise you that. You, you YTC, Boston Twitter, they ain't going to do a goddamn thing. I can, man, they, they like, 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 they, I, I can promise you that. Everything that they say you are, that's who they is. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, just in case you out there in society, you know, don't never, don't never let a nigga trick you. Out of, don't, it's two things I learned from an old player, right? Don't never let a nigga trick you out of your uh, life and don't let a dude trick you out of your freedom. But if you just so do so happen to have to do the do to him, make sure you have all your bases covered. Make sure you have all, make sure y'all uh, have all your bases covered. You get what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? So like you come to Florida, you know, it's the, you know, they call Florida, they call Florida the gunshine state for a reason. You get what I'm saying? So, <laughs> like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Bubba, motherfucker ain't going, motherfucker ain't going to jail for fucking, fucking one of these stupid ass niggas up. Especially if it's self-defense. You can forget it. Uh, anyways, hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. Good news, guys. Got me. Hey, <laughs> hey, I got, man. Stitch, what's going on, fam? Let's give Stitch the ran a warm welcome and round of applause. <laughs> yeah, man. Stitch. Stitch, how you doing, fam? I'm all right, man. Just doing a little bit of yard work. You know, I, I am human, by the way. And kind of like uh, being a homebody when I'm at home. And so yeah. I was trimming up some of the palm trees and all that, but I'm doing good, man. I've been blessed. Uh, finally get to hook up with you, Malachi. Yeah, I, I appreciate you, man. It's amazing. You say you're Cuban because you know, Florida, Florida have, have a huge Cuban population in this state. Oh, no, I should. I'm Mexican. I'm on the West side. I'm the, other, the West side. I'm the Mexican. Uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Over there and the Puerto Ricans, but the Mexicans <laughs> on the West coast. Um, Stitch, for, for, any, for all those who may not know who you are, who may be, be under a rock, let people know who you are and what your background is. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, I guess my claim to fame is being a cut man, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so my job is when I get in the dressing room, I'll wrap the fighters' hands in theory so they don't break them and come fight time is I'm the cut me mitt guy, right? So my job is to minimize any injuries and give them every opportunity to win the round and go that one more round. But you know, I, I grew up as a farm worker in Malachi in the Central Valley of California. Um, you know, I left when I was uh, 20 years old. I joined the military, but God, I just, I tell people, if you ate it, I probably picked it for you. It's, it's what I did, but my dream was always to play baseball and I couldn't do it. Walked on to a college and they didn't have a car. So I joined the Air Force and in 1974, they stationed me in Thailand and there I studied the martial arts and got me to this level. So uh, it's been a, been a fun career. 
Um, Stitch, it, it, it's, it's amazing because a lot of people don't really understand the importance of a cut man. You seem to be the more, probably the most famous cut man I, I know, I know of. Why is that though? Uh, I, I think performance has to kind of go up to the top. Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, I've worked with so many world champions in, in all sports at the high level. You know, one of my specialties is wrapping hands and that's always a good commodity to have when you're working with a new fighter and, you know, you give them that point of uh, confidence. And, uh, but, you know, it's funny because I did an interview the other day and the guy, uh, I said, you know, I'm trying to name three cut men and I can't. <laughs> I thought that was a very fair question. I, I've never heard that before, but uh, I guess let me ask you. You're the only one I know. Yeah, yeah. seems to be the case. Yeah, you're the only one I know. Um, how many movies have you been in? Seven. Seven I, movies. I've been, in, I've been in seven. I've been in eight. One was uh, with Edward James Olmos, by the way, and Anderson Silva. Uh, that fought in the UFC, but that was an independent, and I just kind of went in there to help him out. But on uh, on the IMBDs, I've been in seven movies, nice ones too. Um, you look like you know you you look like the um, I forgot the Mexican actor that played in American Me. You, Every, I swear to... I, I get I get it all the time, and and that's why when when I did the independent movie, it was with him, and uh, I always wanted to meet him, you know, because of course he's a Mexican actor and he's a great actor and. But I knew he was going to be at one of the UFCs because him and Anderson Silva were going to do a movie. And Anderson Silva was the main event. So I'm in the back, I'm wrapping hands, and one of the UFC staff says, hey, man, Edward James almost wants to meet you. Mm -hmm. So I finish wrapping hands, I go down the hallway, and I turn right, and where the green screen's at, he's there, and we look at each other. We start like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And uh, he called my mother and we talked. And so I did the movie just to, you know, just to help him out. And uh, but he says people call him Stitch all the time, you know, especially when he goes to fights. Man, Stitch, um, as it, speaking of fights, as it relates to what happened this past weekend with Tim Zhu and uh, Sebastian Fendor, I, that was a bloody fight. I did get a chance to see it. Um, people are all over the place with this. And, and a lot of people are upset. At, at, at what transpired um in your opinion what went wrong in that fight uh for the most part everything <laughs> you know it's uh you know keep in mind malachi in in our game in our sport combat sports which includes mma bare knuckle fights boxing none of us have to be certified to be considered a cut man or to be even considered a trainer right all you need is a license and hang out in the gym and work with fighters but that um uh, that was a back cut right from the get get go. You know, it was it was right on top of the head here, and and if you know when we laugh, that big vein that pops out that comes down there, uh, that is part of that. Once you pop that, uh, the chances of controlling it are extremely extremely hard uh, because the blood flows so heavily that the medication you put on it it won't absorb it, and the the adrenaline chloride one one thousand that we apply as a medication that's a vessel constrictor. But that vein is a little bit thicker than the smaller ones, and it's very, very hard for those for that to close. So, uh, but what what should have happened, and and I know because I've been in those situations, like three, four times, right in the UFC, Forrest Griffith, and uh, uh, I worked with Jay Haran. Jay Haran was the bloodiest fighter I ever worked in my life. He popped that vein, and both fighters had blood from the top of the head to the bottom of their feet, and uh, and you just can't control it. But what I did with Vladimir Klitschko, and they should have done that. And, you know, Velika, that's why it's important to know the rules and regulations. So Vladimir Klitschko had just come back from losing his world title to Lehman Brewster, and he fought Devereaux Williamson here at Caesars uh, Outdoor. And the first time I worked with him, well, he gets, he wins the first three rounds, right? He just come back from losing his title. He looked okay, but not great, right? Well, on the fourth round, he gets dropped by Devereaux Williamson. In fact, Devereaux Williamson's said I changed his whole life. <laughs> I, I screwed up his career. Uh, anyway, uh, so he got dropped. All right, but he's still winning three rounds to two. When you get dropped, you get two points. So in the fifth round, he gets that unintentional headbutt, that mm -hmm. cut right there. And I've worked on those before, but percentage-wise, and where we're at, the best opportunity for him to win this fight was right then and there because in my anticipation, he was ahead by one point. 
So when the doctor came in, I, well, I told Vitaly and I told Vladimir, I whispered in their ear, Emmanuel Stewart's over here, he didn't hear it. But I said, look, you got a back cut, you're winning the fight, I'm gonna have the doctor stop the fight. So when the doctor came in, I worked with Dr. Goodman many, many, many times. She says, what do you think, Stitch? I go like this, I opened up the cut. I said, that's ah, pretty bad. She stopped the fight, it went to the scorecards, Vladimir Klitschko ended up winning the fight and became world champion for eight years. So the next day she calls and she says, you know, I called Emmanuel Stewart and I called Vladimir, but the surgeon says it was a good thing you stopped the cut when you did because it was close to an optical nerve and it would have created mm. no vision. Well, with Tim, they should have done the same thing. You know, it was before uh, the end of the fourth round and, you know, it, it was, it was a world championship fight. So I would have, had the doctor stop the fight, get a rematch, and then, you know, not only that, but it prepares him for a guy that's six foot six inches, right? And uh, so that would have been the proper thing to do. Um, Drew says that um, he said he hate when cut men don't wear gloves. Why is that? That's horrible. That's, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Drew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I always tell these young guys, these young fighters, as I, I try to educate now, Malachi. Uh, but I tell these young guys, I said, look, number one, if you're looking for a cut man, ask him what that medication does, the adrenaline chloride 1-1000 that we put on the on the cuts. If the guy tells you it's a coagulant, get another cut man because that's a wrong answer. It's a vessel constrictor, right? Mm -hmm. But that's my point is, is nobody really goes through any courses to know the fundamentals. Another bad thing is, is I created the wrist wrap, all right? And that's where we put the swabs here. And I tell these guys, if they put the swab in their mouth or in their ear, get another cut, man. Same with the gloves. It's filthy. You know, you're working on a, a on an open wound. I tell the guys when, when I work with new fighters, I say, look, just give me his face. You guys do everything else. I don't take the stool in. That's filthy. If you see a cut man grabbing the stool, that's probably the dirtiest thing on in the ring. Mm -hmm. Guys down, sweat, and just everything. But, yeah, if you don't wear gloves, that's, you know, and that's a good point, Drew. But if you notice the new generation of cut men now, they they have the gloves, they have the wrist wrap, they put the swabs here, they put the Vaseline here, and they work a lot easier. That's the new generation uh, and the techniques that I've been using, oh, for years. But those are the best probable ways of uh, working a cut. Your background is MMA, because I I remember when we spoke in Vegas, I didn't even I didn't even realize this, but you told me no, you was a cut man in the MMA. Yeah. And how did that how did that transfer into boxing? Like, how did you get into boxing from the MMA? Well, I was I was a cut man in in, in kickboxing first, right? Because mm -hmm. I found school at kickboxing. When I when I got back from Thailand, I, I got into boxing to improve my hands, just to learn. And then from there, I started working with amateur boxers, and then I opened up my own school of kickboxing with just a credit card to show you how crazy I was. But it was called ASK, the American School of Kickboxing. Well, from there, I was a trainer before I was even a cut man. But I had to learn to be a cut man just to know all aspects of the game. And, and as I was learning to be a cut man, at that time, it was only boxing. So I remember I went to a fight in Richmond, California. Bone Crusher Smith fought uh, Marvis Frazier, son of Joe Frazier. And this guy did a good job on a cut, one of the earlier fights. And I went and asked him, I said, look, I'm trying to learn to be a cut man. Can you tell me what you did? And the guy says, fuck you. I'm taking this to my grave. And you got to learn like me. And he walked away. So I said, I'm never going to be like this man. Never, never. But that was a the mentality then. And and now my job is to teach. So he didn't want to share the knowledge. That was the old boxing mentality. No gloves, swabs here, swabs there. That was the old, you know, it's because the blind led the blind. And uh, when I got into the game, I looked, I mean, something as simple as gloves. You know, uh, you should have them just out of respect to the fighter. And even uh, a sponge. You see guys with a sponge and, and they asked me about that and and never use a sponge. If you do it, it's only for that one fighter. <clears throat> because if you clean them up, you're still gonna have blood within the the little areas of the sponge. If you use it on somebody else, and that's gonna go to them. Just common sense, bro. Man, that's crazy. So, so, so in, in this in this particular fight, this fight should have been stopped. I think it's an overall consensus. Yeah. Everyone agrees that it should have been stopped. Why the doctor didn't stop it? Well, it's probably because it was a championship fight, right? I mean, probably more than anything, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be my only thought. I, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking. I was literally watching the fights in the dressing room because for me, that's a better position, you know, instead of sitting at ringside with 
people yelling. So I got to hear the commentating and I got to see the close ups. But I don't know. You know, it could have been that it was it was a championship fight and and they try to give him every opportunity to win the fight. How 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 you know you know what gets me is is what you said. You said that you don't have to go through any kind of school or training or whatever to become a cut man. So how does how do you know you have a good cut man or not? There's no, um, like, I think even in the NFL, the referee, you just can't be someone that comes off the street and become a referee. Like how, what? What's the process of picking a cut man in boxing? Uh, past performance. You know, what have you done before? Who have you worked with? You know, what kind of recommendations? Uh, wrapping hands, even wrapping hands, you know. Uh, there's been many, many times I've seen guys wrapping hands and I look at them and, there's even been times when commissioners have asked me, can you wrap this guy's hands? You know, because mm -hmm. I don't know what he's doing. And that's, that's, that's a shame at this stage of the game because the bottom line in our sport, combat sports, it's a hurt business. Mm -hmm. And and if you don't know how to take care of these guys, it's not fair to these fighters. I mean, it's crazy. Um, so I heard that Tim Zhu had a busted uh, vessel in his head, in his forehead, right? Yeah, it was it was kind of up, actually, on this side up here. But on after the... He he couldn't he couldn't see. Blood was getting in his eyes. So so te technically he's like he he lost kind of like by default because he was forced to fight blind. His corner didn't. So could the corner could the corner have said, "Hey, listen, we want to so we need to stop this fight." He hundred percent. I did. <laughs> I did. You know. Yeah. Of course. You know. The bottom line is safety for the fighter. Bottom line. The only line is safety for the fighter. And, and if the fighter is a big disadvantage, then that's not fair to the fighter. Now, keep in mind, this was a, a world championship fight. Fedora came in as a last minute replacement. This young man is six foot, six inches tall and he could fight. Mm -hmm. So Tim Zhu had to make an adjustment on just on the size alone. So if they would have called it a no contest, a rematch would have almost been automatic. And then you could prepare for a guy that's six, six instead of a guy like Keith Thurman that, 5'10", 5'11", you know, uh, that's a big dis difference in disparity. But that's why you got to have a good team with you. Um, the, um, it's amazing you said that because I'm saying if the doctor didn't stop the fight, forget the team. If the team don't stop it for, for because of their negligence, and they should have stopped it. They should have requested that to yeah. stop. But is it safe to say that, okay, so the doctor, they, this is a championship fight. There was a high-stakes fight, a lot on the line. They had the vacant WBC title up for grabs, and uh, Tim Zhu had the WBO strap. So is it safe to say that, you know, I, ain't, I don't want to sound harsh, but did they, whoever was involved with the decision making or whatever the event, they was putting profit over the fighters' health. No, I don't think so. Uh, not not at all. I think you know. I think when the doctors and and let's talk about the doctors and just because I've worked with many of these, and let's say it was past the fifth round, mm -hmm. all right. And if it goes past the fifth round and they stop the fight, it goes to the scorecards, and the point is who was winning at that point. You know, was it Fendora or was it Zoo? So I think the doctors probably at that point, since the corner didn't stop it, they figured, you know, let's keep an eye on him. And and both fighters were bleeding heavily, right? So it, it was a two-way street. So, you know, and, and the thing about the doctors in Las Vegas, they don't freak out with blood, right? And, and even though it looks bad, uh, there's some detriments that go with that. But I think in that aspect, they might have said, you know what, it's past the fifth round. Uh, I can't decide. I can't stop the fight and decide who's going to win the fight. I don't know. That's that's a good question. And when the next time I run into him, I'll ask him. Um, do do they do you do 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 you know if cut men use throw? What's it called? Uh, thrombin. 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 Yeah. Yeah, thrombin. Uh, let me explain to you the medications and that. Uh, yeah, the, the primary one is the adrenaline chloride one one thousand. That's one we put on the cotton swab. That's a vessel constrictor. So if you notice, I'll squeeze the cut. And how many times do you get cut, Malachi, and you do this? And blood coagulates itself, right, with direct pressure. So what I'll do is I'll squeeze it. And in theory, what I'm doing is the little blood that's still stuck within inside those little vessels, I'll squeeze it to clean those that blood out. <clears throat> then I'll put the swab in there, and that absorbs into the veins, and it'll close them. So that's the adrenaline chloride one, 1,000 by prescription only. And it's like $300 a bottle. Uh, the other two, <clears throat> actually, there's, there's three of them. But thrombin and avatine, uh, thrombin is a liquid base, and the avatine is more like a, my wife explained it best, it's like a cotton candy type of fiber. and But you put that on there and it's white, 
And once you punch it, then it takes the clot off. So it doesn't really, it's good for surgery. It's good for after you get into a fight and, and you leave it on until the blood dehydrates. There's another one called quick aid that's 100% natural that I introduced through through my trial and errors with MMA fighters. It's 100% natural, it's made out of a seaweed base and it's a patch and you put it on the cut and what it does, it dehydrates the blood and that doesn't require a prescription. And I recommend everybody to get it and that's available at uh, Cutman for Higher Supplies. So it's Cutman and then the number four supplies. Uh, he carries that and uh, I recommend everybody to have it. You, you know what I'm thinking? Uh, because Fundora had a, they said that Fundora had a broken nose. So I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is this here, next time Tim Zoo fight again, it'd be smart for him to hire you as a cut man. Well, somebody of experience, you know, if it's not me, somebody else, you know, and, uh, you know, that's, that's the shameful thing on this. And, and I've met the young man, you know, he's trained here in Vegas and, you know, God, he looks just like his father, you mm -hmm. know. And, and and I remember his father used to train here, right? So it, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's on them. Has there ever been like a bidding war to hire you? Let's say you got two fighters who want to fight each other and both of them call you, hey, Stitch, I want you to uh, be my cut man and the other guy. How, how do you go about deciding if, have you ever experienced something like that? Somebody well, in like boxing, that? no. I, I, I got to say in boxing, no. Uh, but in when I was with the UFC, it happened all the time. Because uh, the UFC would hire us to, work with them, right? So once they found out that Stitch was working, they would want me to wrap their hands. And and just by the luck of draw, I would be in the red corner. So whoever the UFC assigned to the red corner, I would get them. But let's say I could wrap your hands and, and you know, and work with the other guy. So I was very neutral on that. My job was to give these guys security. And like Vitor Belfort said, he said a great quote. He says, when I see Stitch walking into the dressing room, even though I know he's working on the other side, he brings that calming effect, right? So he knows, you know, my only job and, you know, Frank Mir, you know, when I stitch, yeah. walk, see stitch walking into the dressing room, my stomach drops because I know it's time to fight. <laughs> but, but see, this, this is the thing. So you, had a, you have a lot of experience from the MMA. Um, yes. What are some of the worst cuts that, that, that you've seen that, that even you couldn't stop the bleeding? Well, this one right here, that's, you know, that one right there has been, uh, really about the only one, you know, and, and a lot of times Malachi, this is a good point. If you, if you can't stop it, at least you could control it, you know, and when a fighter, uh, when a doctor or a referee stops a fight, it's when a fighter is at a disadvantage where he can't see, or there's bodily damage, you know, those, that's when they stop the fight. But if you could control the bleeding, uh, and it's not affecting the fighter, then, you know, that's, that's a plus too. What, okay, what about, let me ask you this, what about the referee? It could, could it have been a point in time where the referee could have said, hey, you know what, man, I'm stopping this fight. This guy can't see. His yeah. Blood is coming to that. Uh, yeah, exactly, 100%. I, uh, you know, the, the referees will uh, converse with the doctors. And, and, you know, a lot of times the referee will call timeout. And he'll take the, the fighter to the doctor, and the doctor will evaluate him. And then they talk amongst themselves. And a lot of the times the doctor will say, look, if he continues taking shots, stop the fight. So he's he's entitled to that. But they all work together. And and as Richard Steele and Joe Cortez said in an interview that I did with them years ago, they always see who's working the corner. And if it's someone of experience, then they'll give them that additional uh, benefit to work on. Oh, oh I, you know, I didn't, I didn't even realize that. So, so the referee does take that into consideration. 100%. Yeah, 100%. I've, you know, seen, I've, seen, I've seen horrible work, Malachi. <laughs> my kids, my kids grew up in the gym, so they know the game. And you know, let's say I'm doing a show in New York, and and the guy's doing a bad job. I'll get a call or a message from my my son or my daughters, and they'll say, "Look, this guy's doing this wrong." You know, and it happens all the time. Happens all the time. Uh, the one Mr. Ham says that. Uh, shout out to you, fam. He said uh, he said great interview, coach. He said Mr. Stitch is a prime example of how paying it forward yields long term success. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. You try to take care of these babies, man. You know, and they they are babies. You know, I always say, deep inside, they're all modern day gladiators. You know, to get in the ring and do what they do, but deep inside, they're all babies. And my job is to take care of the baby, and they understand that. You know, I mean, many times. Fighters give me a kiss and they tell me they love me, you know, and just because we have that bond. 
you know, you know the crazy part about it is, it, 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 I, now, that, now that I'm talking to you, you're right. You do bring a sense of calmness. It's like, okay, they got Stitch Duran. I don't know what it is. It's like you have like a fatherly uh, uh, energy or whatever, but it's like, okay, Stitch is there. I know he's a really, really good cut man. You're the most famous cut man that I know. Um, you, apparently, you do a really good job. Cause you you still work you still work MMA right? No, they, they uh, I, I'm boxing only. The UFC Dana White fired me nine years ago for speaking out about the Reebok deal and and kind of supporting the fighters and and ourselves. Uh, but I became the face of the rebellion, you know. Now, you know, I, uh, so that's another story, bro. You yeah, know, became the face of the rebellion, and I'm glad I did it. Dana Dana White fired you about a deal that UFC had with Reebok. Yeah, well, what happened is. We Dana, I knew Dana way before the UFC, and he brought me in. I was doing a, a K1 kickboxing at the Bellagio, and he's in the audience, and uh, he asked for my card, and the next day he called and says, hey, look, we bought the UFC, uh, checking to see if you'd be interested in being one of the house cut men. And at that time, with the original UFC, the only cut man was Leon Tabs. He was a, the legendary cut man that worked with Bernard Hopkins. Mm -hmm. So Dana and them bought the UFC, they brought Leon on board, and Dana was smart enough to realize that MMA was such a new sport that guys didn't know how to wrap hands or work cuts. So they brought me in to be to work one side of the one corner and Leon Tabs to work the other. And it got to the point where, you know, it uh, sponsors, we're all making money on on sponsors. UFC at that point was paying garbage. Uh, but I was making my money through sponsors, through watches, through clothing, apparel and, you know, Zions and Bad Boy and uh, you know, tap out and, and the, the fighters are making 50, hundred grand a fight, making shit load of money. So they went to Reebok exclusive and didn't let the fighters know. And everybody's disappointed. And so they're hating UFC, Dana, Reebok. And so John Nash from bloodyalbo.com never met the man. He called me and asked if I'd be interested in doing an interview on how the Reebok deal affected the cut men. And of course, being that I grew up as a farm worker, my parents were always fighting for the rights of the farm workers with Cesar Chavez. So I spoke out and it was very um, corporate, because uh, I work corporate America, it was very politically correct. But maybe I said that uh, I got to concentrate a little bit more on boxing since boxing pays a lot more than UFC. Well, that shit went viral. <laughs> and I did like 57 interviews in a week and, and they called me, my friends called me and, and the only thing they said is because of the interview you did about Reebok, the UFC is not going to use you no more. And uh, I said, all right, all right, you know, Mark, do me a favor. You tell Dana, I said, he ain't got no balls that he should have called me personally since he's the one that brought me in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, the first response I get, I, re I reply that I'm gone and got to look for a new job. And sure enough, from there, I got offers all over the world. Uh, so um, um, that's crazy. OK, you, you just educated me on something. I used to watch the UFC back in the day, like in the early, like 93, 94. Um, I don't know if it was called UFC then. That's when Ken Ken Shamrock was. Yeah. Ken Shamrock, Tank Tank, I think Tank Abbott. Tank, Tank, yeah, of course. Worked with yeah. them all. Yeah. Um, so you said Dana White bought the UFC? Well, the Lorenzo and Frank Fertitta, uh, the two brothers bought the UFC, and Dana was always he was one of their friends. So they they made Dana the president of the company. Uh, but yeah, Dana didn't uh, he didn't invest in it. He he became the face of uh, of the UFC. Did he, did he, um, I know in boxing, a lot of people talk bad about Dana White. I get it. I understand that. I'm not getting caught in the emotional aspect of it, but, um, did he like revolutionize the sport in your opinion for the better? Yeah, no, he did. He did a great job, you know, I, uh, until this point, but you know, the, the thing with the, when I first started with the, with the UFC, I think there was 12 employees. It was that brand new. And, uh, and then at that point we were all names. So we worked on names and Dana says this. As we make money, you all make money, right? And uh, but then they went into the corporate status, which I understand. It's a business, and and when you go into corporate status, you kind of get rid of the names and you go into numbers, and and the numbers are profit margins, and that I understand, you know. But uh, there's certain ways of going about corporate America, and and uh, they kind of went the the hard way, and and didn't give the fighters uh, any opportunities, and uh, so. Yeah, till now, people still stop me all over the world. And uh, best, like Wesley Snipes at the Creed movie. Hey, man, UFC did you wrong. 
Bill Goldberg. Hey, man, if they got respect for you, you know, but the best compliment I got was uh, one of the Brazilian coaches. Uh, when we had COVID, we were doing shows here at the MGM, and I hadn't seen him in eight years. He comes up to me and he says, Steve, we, the coaches, the fighters, we thank you for speaking up because we couldn't. From there, I, I could have died right then and there, Malachi. Um, you, it's, it's amazing you say that because um, do you think that the coaches, uh, trainers should have some type of union if they could? Well, yeah, 100%, and that's something that we're working on behind the scenes. I'm still fighting for the struggle. But, you know, it's a shame in this day and age uh, that boxing, all com combat sports. I did a documentary, got 23, 24, maybe 25 years ago, called Boxer's Nightmare, never did nothing with it. Uh, this young man that helped me, John Barnhouse, passed away about a year ago. And I looked at this film, and I'll send it to you. Once we're off, I'll send it to you. I looked at this film and I'm thinking, wow, everybody here are all Hall of Famers. I got Mike Tyson before he got his tattoos. I got Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, Fernando Vargas, Emmanuel Stewart, Mills Lane, Joe Cortez, Richard Steele, uh, Chuck Bodak, Doc Brodus, uh, Joe Lewis's daughter. I got all these people that talked about the issues that were happening then and nothing's ever been changed. They all had solutions and nothing, nothing has ever been changed. Uh, until now. So we're going to make an effort to, yeah, they should have pension plans. They should have insurance. You know, Mike Tyson said very simply in this interview, and I'll send it to you. He says, guys like me, Lennox Lewis, Oscar De La Hoya, you know, uh, you know, when we fight, get some of our money, let's give it to these guys. We don't need it. We're taken care of, but let's give it to these guys. With, you know, with that being said, and then Mark Ratner uh, was the, the president or the uh, CEO of the Athletic Commission says the money comes from the pay-per-views. So there's money to be created to take care of these guys, but nothing's ever done anything uh, about it. So, yeah. Um, I'm I'm, I'm, hey, Stitch I'm, Stitch, I'm glad you said something. You said that, the, that boxing pays more than the UFC. The question I have is this. When you say the boxing pays more than the UFC, are you talking about, because, you know, in boxing, there's not a bunch of Canelos or Crawfords or, you know, uh, Tank Davis's or Tyson Fury's, most of boxing is blue collar fighters. Those right. guys don't make a whole lot of money. Are you saying that? Are you are you are you saying that those blue collar fighters make more money than the fighters in the UFC? Or are you just talking about the top guys? No, 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 no. And, uh, the all boxing pays more than the UFC. And uh, you know, Francis Angano that just fought uh, Tyson Fury, right? I think for a championship fight, he was a world champ. I think he got something like seven hundred thousand uh, dollars to defend his title, and uh, I think when he fought uh, Tyson Fury, somebody's talking about twenty third, thirty million. Uh, but the thing I liked about Francis is that he says, "Hold on," he says that we, he says that whenever I fight for PFL, because he signed with PFL Bellator, whenever I fight, my fi my fighter or my opponent will get a minimum of two million dollars. So, you know, the, the actions are starting to, they're starting to create. And, you know, and there's, there's people who I'm working with that are working on yeah, at least getting a pension plan and insurance plan. And, you know, one of the things is, you know, these guys are all independent contractors, but you can still get an insurance plan and a pension plan. Let's say you're in the gym or one of your fighters in the gym, Malachi, and he breaks his hand in the gym or he gets cut sparring. Well, if he goes to the hospital, he goes under the, ABC Association, well, they would pay for that that service. Very simple. Why not? These guys deserve it. I, I've, I mean, I've heard some horror. I don't know much about UFC. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm very ignorant when it comes to UFC. But Boston, I've been watching Boston. I'm 50. So I've been watching Boston since I was like eight years old. And I've just heard horror stories about boxing, man. Just fighters getting, how they get beat out of their money. And, and, and the blue collar fighters, don't nobody really care nothing about them. So it's like I've been hearing horror, horror stories about boxing. Oh, yeah. Listen, years. In this documentary, it's a great doc. It's called Boxer's Nightmare. Really, when I looked at it, I'm thinking, wow, we did it on a pretty much on a zero budget, but nobody, nobody got the interviews I did. And, and Mike Tyson says, he goes, look at guys like me. He goes, I lost over $100 million. And what do you tell your family? What do you tell, you know, this is what makes a fighter punch drunk, you know, and, and those are comments coming from high end people. But even something as simple as, as, as manager, uh, manager agreement, mm -hmm. the maximum that a manager could take from a fighter is 33 and a third percent. 
Fighters don't understand that maximum. And and there were a lot of times they'll sign them up for 33 and a third percent. So Rolando Arellano that managed Fernando Vargas says, look, if all you're doing is making a phone call, you should be entitled to 10%. You're basically an agent. But if you're paying for this guy, you're investing in him. You're paying for his rent, his food, his car, his training expenses. Then, then you're hoping that you would make the money down the road. Then 33 and a third percent is acceptable. But they don't tell these fighters that. And a lot of guys sign up a contract at 33 and a third percent, they get screwed. It, 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 it's very, it's very similar to the music industry, from, from what I'm hearing. Yes. Um, so the, the fighter, <laughs> listen, so the fighter gets paid his money. Let's say he get paid a hundred percent of his money, but then the manager is going to get thirty three and a third. Let's say he has a contract structure like that. Is that thirty three and a third of the gross or the net? It should be off the gross, I would think. You know, because he has to pay his, his own taxes. I would right. think so. You know? <laughs> and uh, so, and then not only that, but then now you got to train, you got to pay your coach, which is usually about ten percent. If you have sparring partners, you got to pay them. You know, you got to pay the gym dues. You know, so if you make a hundred thousand, you might end up with fifty of that. Fifty, the other fifty goes to taxes and paying off your uh, the people that you work with. So, so again, when you get paid, you they need to set that that you get a hundred thousand um, dollars. You're going to pay taxes after you pay everybody out. Well, that's that, that's manager sets up for them. Right, right. So. But, but the promoter, the promoter got to get his cut too. Well, the promoter shouldn't get his cut because the promoter is you're fighting for the promoter, you know. But that's where that's where Mike Tyson says, "Look at me, I got screwed out of hundreds of millions of dollars." And who do you think screwed him? Yeah, we already know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Snitch, but well, hold on. But on the flip side of that, our good brother Don King would say, "Hey, look, look, baby." You know, he was making $30 million a fight with me. Now, if he ain't managing his money right, how y'all going to blame me for that? That ain't my fault. You know, that, 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 that's, that's what Don would say or any other promoter would probably say. Well, that's of course. What else are you going to say? <laughs> hey, Stitch. So, doggo, the fighter. So, uh, I got a mean question. Being what you know about the sport of boxing right now today, what advice would you give a fighter? You you see, you heard the great you heard the great great stories, but you heard the horror horror stories from a financial standpoint. You see fighters after they you know after they get beat you know after fights they get used up or they don't have any more market value in the sport. They get kicked to the curb. We don't hear nothing about them anymore. What advice would you give a fighter and in, in, in coming in, coming to boxing? Well, you know what? If you do it for the money, you do it for the wrong reasons because not everybody's going to make money. And and you got to have a passion for what you do, uh, and you know and enjoy it, because as they say, one percent of the fighters make ninety nine percent of the money. Yeah. So yeah. you know, and I walk into the gyms. I, you know, I'll go to the Mayweather gym and Salas's gym and Bones Adams gym, and I look at all these fighters, and they all have one dream, and that's to become a world champion. But not all of them will become a world champion. It's amazing you say that. One percent of the fighters make ninety nine percent of the money. So. The one percent would be the top name guys, the Cadellos, the Anthony Joshua's, the Furies, yeah. this and that. And and I and I tell my audience over here all the time, I say, bro, look, it's not a bunch of Canellos running around boxing. It's you know, you have those top guys that's making money, but then those other guys, you know, they gotta get in, they got they gotta get in where they fit in. And you have promoters, they have the relationships with the networks. So it's kind of like the fighter is in is at the mercy of I guess a promotional company. Yeah, of course, and and even the management team. You know, the a lot of the promoters are, are or the managers are locked in with the, with the promoters. But you know, uh, as Fernando Vargas says, you know, I got to look, I got to understand everything, international sales, uh, concessions. You know, but that's why I tell these young guys is if your manager or agent is negotiating a deal with you, for you, you should be there sitting with them and and understand what's going on so that nothing goes you know where the manager uh will or the promoter will say well, look come here manager you know what let me give you this percentage and give this kid that percentage so a lot of times the manager can make more money complex the, of, that's a conflict of interest though well of course it is that's why we got the, that's why you got the muhammad ali reform act bill but that really hasn't been uh enforced as much as it should be 
they, they do you think that some promotion some promoters i'm not saying no names just, just throwing it out there do you think that some promoters have found the way to subvert the muhammad ali act to do what now to subvert it like i i, I like i know i know how to get around that yeah, well yeah there's really been no substance to it, it it's, it's a great program uh but really there's no substance to the muhammad ali reform act bill right now nobody's really a lot of people aren't following it to the d so it's, it's nice to have it there uh, but it's not working out. Um, if a fighter starts asking about, like you said, the fighter need to be right there with the with the manager who's negotiating the deal with the promoter. If you start asking about international sales and let's say sponsorships and stuff like that, um, the fighter could be labeled as being, I don't know, in a sport, difficult to deal with. Um, he's uh, hard to negotiate with. When you start asking questions about Okay, but wait a minute. If I'm the one putting my life on the line, and my name is as a part of this fight, and we're and and, and because of my name, as as well as everybody working together, we're generating all of this money together. If I start asking about those things, because I'm, I'm gonna tell you where I'm going at. What I notice in boxing and the sport today, the modern day fans, they want their fighter who they love to make all the money, and they'll get online and brag and yeah, my fighter rich and. They'll threaten other people, argue, debate about their fighter. But when it's a fighter that they don't like, and he started asking those type of questions, it's a problem. Um, do, do you do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand, and you should ask those questions, because you know, with without a fighter, you don't have a manager. Without a fighter, you don't have a trainer. Without a fighter, you don't have a cut man. So he is the boss, and and that's what people have to understand that the fighter is the boss, and that in any business, you always hire different people to do different projects for you under the same umbrella. And that's what a manager would do, and that's what a trainer would do, and that's what a cut man would do, part of the program. But the money comes from the fighter. <laughs> right? hey, hey, I said this on the show, I say, listen, I, cause I hear Linda Ellaby say all the time, well, boxing is a business, it's a business first. Yeah, but the, but the sport is what generates the business. There's yeah. no such thing as the, the business of boxing without the sport. What makes the sport what it is are the fighters. So don't tell me what well, a fighter needs to understand the business. No, if it wasn't, the fighter is the one generating the business. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Leonard Allaby's money is, or, or his position is money. Right. His only position is to create money, income. I can understand that, right? So that's his mentality. But in the same token, uh, you know, our job is to take care of the fighter. Um, I got a couple of super chats on uh, um, Stitch. This guy, uh, shout out to Stephen X. He said, what do you think about Ryan Garcia's antics? <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I I don't think they're working. <laughs> I, know he, I saw him kind of drinking a bottle. Of the guy. He don't drink. You know, that's, uh, yeah, all that's bullshit. <laughs> um, shout out to Candy Slim. He said, um, say, would Stitch be interested in posting that documentary on YouTube? Um, and has he ever had a cornerman go down? And, and he had to step in and give instructions. Oh, it's a good question. Yeah, well, you know, the documentary, here's what I want to do. I'll send it to you and, and take a look at it, and maybe we could discuss it. But what I want to do is... Yeah, please uh, send it to me. I, I, you know, we, what, can, we can make something happen with that. What, what I want to do is, uh, is update it and, and use some of these, I mean, the great, great comments from these legends and use some of those points and now get new interviews with MMA guys because now everything affects MMA. And then current fighters uh, like uh, uh, Nico Ali and 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 Biagio, they're Muhammad Ali's grandsons. And I worked I, I worked with Nico and I talked to him. And it'd be nice to get their opinions. Uh, MMA guys, I see MMA guys that are now going through dementia pugilistica, the punch drunk, the slurred speech, uh, the managerials, the so everything. It, nothing has changed. So yeah, we're, we're gonna it, it will be out and and hopefully soon. Man, it's, it's, it's amazing. Stitch, listen, um, um, I don't want to take much of your time. I have just, just a couple of more questions. So um, it amazes me that you said that the fighter is the boss. A lot of fans don't know that. A lot of fans today, they side with the promoter, the promotional companies, the networks, this and that. And the image that's being put out there 
is that no, the, the promotional companies are the bosses. The fighter has to fall in line and do what they're, do what they're told. Only some fighters are looked at as part of being the boss. Uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez, well, Canelo's a boss. He does what he wants to do. He's on a different level, but everybody else got to fall in line. T to me, that's complete bullshit. Well, yeah, I mean, I can understand the business aspect of, of, of a promoter. Yeah, fall in line. Here's what we want you guys to do. But the initial conversations, uh, when it deals with uh, dollars and cents and who you're going to fight, all that decision should be based on uh, the opinion of the fighter. You know, so your job as a manager is to get your maximum exposure at a minimal cost and to take care of you. Um, a lot of these, some of these promoters, I've, I've been hearing horror stories. I'm not saying any names. I don't know names because I don't want nobody saying Stitch said anything. Stitch is not saying anything. This is me. I'm not saying no names. But I've heard horror stories about managers of fighters being compromised. They're being a little too cozy with the promotional company. And they're kind of like it's a conflict of interest because now they're working more for the benefit of the promotional company because the manager may have other fighters. He's trying to get fight on that card with that network. So now he's become it become compromised you know not saying no names but just throwing that out there yeah and and you're probably 100 percent right um hey Stitz, listen uh, thank you so much uh brother for taking the time out i don't want to hold too much of your time could you let anyone who may be watching the show if they want to get in contact with Stitz Duran, hire you for your services um or in, are your kids doing cut cut no 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 they just know the game do you plan on do how, how long how many more years do you do you think you can want to continue know. doing this do my mechanics fail but you know, I'll still be doing educationals and uh, I'll still, if I'm not going up and down the stairs because of mechanics, then I'll still be using uh, my expertise to try to make this game a lot safer. So I'm going to... Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah sorry, sorry about that. Um, um, I will I will get in contact with you about about the documentary that you, yeah. that you worked yeah, just on. just send me your email and then I'll I'll send it to you. And it's like I say, it's, it was done pretty much on a, on a very minimal budget. But when I looked at it, after not seeing it for so many years, uh, it's not even about that. It's about the interviews that I got and the responses that were given to me by these legends. It just, it, it blows my mind. Mike Tyson was phenomenal. Yeah, I, I, I bet he was. I'm, I, I'm just texting it to you now on my, my email. Um, yeah. Stitch, um, thank you so much for taking the time out to do this interview. Um, are, there, are there any parting words that you would like to give anyone who may be listening? Nah, well, you know, Chad, I think you guys are asking about when's it's going to come out on YouTube. Well, they're doing a documentary on my life. Uh, it's, uh, it's called From the Fields to the Garden because I wrote a, a book called From the Fields to the Garden. The fields were growing up as a farm worker, and my goal was to make it to Madison Square Garden. We've well, been there many times. So anyway, my, our last day of filming is April 28th uh, when I get inducted into the, uh, to the National uh, Boxing Hall of Fame in, in Los Angeles. Congratulations. And, uh, Thanks. And then August, I'm getting inducted into the <coughs> Boxing Hall of Fame. So a lot of good things are happening. Got a new cannabis line coming out in June. Uh, oh, well, hey, ooh, yeah, listen, listen. You said <laughs> cannabis. Now, I'm an app. Now, I support the greener things in life. So when that come out, please let me know. Because I, I, I will be back in Vegas to do to do this show at a podcast in Vegas yeah. at, a, at a cannabis dispensary. Oh, yeah. We'll hook you up with Planet 13. It's the biggest one in the world. That's where we're having the... Uh, coming out party. So it's yeah. uh, when they came to me, they do for Snoop Dogg and Alton John and all these high ends. And, and uh, uh, I told them the best weed I ever smoked was a year I was stationed in Thailand. If mm -hmm. you could create something as good as that, which was Thai stick, we'll call it Thai stitch. So yeah. the product <laughs> <will> be stitch. <laughs> oh, the, cho the, top of the chocolate tie. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Back in the day, yeah. All right, well, Stitch, man, thank you so much, brother, for uh, taking the time out, man. I I'm gonna call, I will call you, I'll text you the email and uh, please send it to me. All right, my okay. All right, peace. Let's give Stitch Duran a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Yeah, man, man. Oh, man, bro. This is, this, man, this, hey, bro, we learned, hey, I learned, hey, I learned a lot. I learned a lot just, I mean, because I know Stitch is busy, so and he took the, allocated the time out. And anytime I'm interviewing people, man, I always take their time into consideration. I, and I, I understand, you know, this guy's a busy guy. He's very, very busy. I've been trying to get him on the show for the past two weeks. So um, when I get people on the show, I don't want to take too much of their time. I just want to ask pointed questions, you know, like, uh, you know, just to the point questions and stuff like that. A lot of stuff he's already said on different podcasts. So you can check them out as well. Mill City Boxing and those other podcasts. But I just really appreciate 
um, Stitch taking the time out. <clears throat> He's a very, very nice guy. I met him in Vegas at the Teofimo Lopez, Jermaine Ortiz fight. I, like literally, he sat right next to me. He came up to me. He said, hey man, coach, how you doing? Pat hit, hit, hit me on my knee and um, I was like, Stitch, man, you know, you know, you know, of course I said, I said it was an honor for me to meet, man, it's an honor to meet you, man, you know, cause I, you know, I never thought I'd see, meet Stitch Duran when I saw him. Uh, we had a great conversation. He works one of the fighters' corner. I think he worked, was it Keyshawn Davis? I think he might have worked Keyshawn Davis's corner. Uh, I'm not sure. Either Ke no, it wasn't Abdullah Mason. He worked somebody's corner. I forgot who it was, but he was in one of those guys' corner, and he's a really, really nice guy, very approachable. I mean, you guys will love him. Let's give him a round of applause one more time. Hey, shout out to Gertz, man, for being a member for 14 months. He said, shout out to Stitch, real solid dude. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm finna drop these phone lines. Y'all can call into the show, man. It is what it is. I'm gonna get ready to drop these phone lines. Y'all call into the show, man, and speak your peace. You wanna talk some shit? Call me. Start some shit, bitch. Sup, fool? You gonna talk shit about me, homie? Where you from? Hundreds of niggas is waiting for your motherfucking call, and they all talking shit about you right now. Call the coach at 530-494-9636. We waiting on your bitch ass. And also, before we, before I accept any phone calls, we got to pay some bills for my sponsor. You know, uh, for my sponsor, Queen City Comedy Showcase in Mississippi. We're going to pay some bills right now. And when I come back, y'all call the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Thundercats, Mole Rats, Water Buffaloes, Alligators, and Haters. Mark your calendar. It's going all the way down. The place to be, Meridian, Mississippi. Queen City Friday Night Comedy Showcase. Bringing out all the big dogs. Friday, April 26th. Get your laugh on with comedian sensation Bubba Dove. Special performances by comedian Scruncho. And the messenger Keith Wallace. We partying at the Temple Theater, Meridian, Mississippi. Doors open at 8 p.m. Tickets available on Eventbrite or call Big G at 808-225-9063. Yeah, man, uh, Big G, Big Big G, that's my guy, that's my manager. <laughs> Big G is my manager uh, out, out of Mississippi, man, so, um, you know, things are really, really taking off for us. We're doing very, very well, and um, in, the, in the near future, when people want to, you know, in it, when people want to do business with me, everything's going to have to go through Big G from, from in, in, in the near future, sir. Really, it's like, really, it's like that now, to be fair, but um, he told me to handle some things myself and anything he, I can't handle just send it over to him, so I'm gonna make sure that that's how we gonna have everything structured, order. Uh, but anyways, man, I, I'm um, um, I'm real happy, man. Stitch the Ram, man. Like, like, see, I like, I like, I like having people. I like interviewing. I really love that interview with him, man. Like this is this guy here. I learned a lot, man. Like I gotta go back and listen to this interview, and I'm gonna drop it again tomorrow. Um, call him, call him, call back. Uh, you you fell off. Call a call back. Like literally, bro. Cause um, I didn't even know that. You know, they didn't, you know, this cut men didn't have to go through any training or nothing of that sort. Um, um, and then boxing, the way boxing is set up. Again, like these managers are telling you guys, man, bro, you know, I know UFC is bad, you know, because I've, you know, I've heard that they don't get paid a lot of money and stuff like that. But boy, I've, I, I, what I do know is boxing. And I know that, boy, boxing, you know, the horror stories that I heard, man, about these fighters. You know, yeah, a fighter, no, shut up. Sign the contract. Sink the point. Just take whatever we give you. Like, y'all remember these niggas online talking about, yeah, you know, take, take, take whatever they give you. Crawford, Crawford, he dumb. He, he a bad business man. He supposed to take whatever we give you. Man, you listen to some two-figure niggas online hollering about, you supposed to take what they give you. You'll be a fool if you do some dumb ass shit like that. All because you don't like the fighter. He's supposed to just buy down and just take whatever they give him. Y'all some dumb motherfuckers. Um, call her, what's your name you call her from? Sheila from Cali. Sheila from Cali, talk to me. Hey, I enjoyed the interview. Great interview. You asked some questions that uh, made him actually speak, and it, you know, let us know what's going on in his profession. So I thought that was really cool. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up is um, one, one of the most ridiculous things I ever seen was remember Mike Tyson fought Buster Douglas and they didn't know what to do with Tyson's cut and they actually put like a balloon or a glove of ice. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Huh? Yes, I remember that. Yeah, so that's a prime example of you gotta check who your cut man is. No, really, because that, that actually, that's very, very important. So you just can't have anybody in your corner. You, I mean, I wish they did have some type of certification or a school 
And I think uh, Stitch had mentioned that he's working on that. Did he say, or am I mistaken? He's trying to get like some type of school or training or program for these yeah. cut men? Yeah, just, I Did mean, just, that? yeah, just, just for, I think he was saying something, something of the sort. See, the thing is, boxing has no structure. Um, boxing really has no structure at all. It's like the Wild Wild West, so they're able to do any and every, everything that they want. The power brokers in boxing run run the run the sport. It was the networks because right. the networks was mm -hmm. the, the promotional companies was beholden to the networks because the networks was putting the money up at one point in time. Now that a lot of the networks have folded, Showtime, um, HBO, and stuff like that. Now it, look, right. it looks like we're starting to see a changing of the guard a little bit, maybe. But you, you're going to always have those old school type mentality power brokers in boxing fighter shut the fuck up do what we tell you to do take what we give you don't be asking questions if you ask too many questions 60 40 70 30 80 20 take whatever we give you you know you ain't a, see this is what they do right when you go to asking questions about okay well you you got a deal from international rights what am i getting a cut on that or well, what about the sponsor what about the endorsements you got oh wait a minute you know he very difficult to deal with he difficult you know he you know right. he, you know that, that, see that's what they do and they're doing that to Crawford right now. It's 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 yeah. it's, it's, it's propaganda. It's, it's a propaganda um, hit piece that these guys are doing because they want the fighter to shut the fuck up and do what we tell you to do, boy. <laughs> do what I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. And so. Well, it, thank you for taking my call. All right. Shout out to Celia and Callie. Salute. Okay. Appreciate you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, see, I know what it is because I do this shit every day. I know what I saw. Oh, this some, this some, this some old school. This old hit piece right here they putting out. And what they do is this stuff is coming out from one side of, of well, certain promoters of the companies, and they'll they'll paint a narrative about certain fighters. They'll paint that narrative about certain fighters, and the sole purposes of, of them doing that is to try to devalue the fighter in the eyes of the public. And so. The fighter know what's going on, but he's like, man, he motherfucker making up all kind of shit. The fighter know what's going on, but the, the fighter doesn't, you know, he doesn't have media members on the payroll in order to get his, get his message out. Fighters don't have that a lot of times. So, you know, uh, Carla, hold on. So the media job is to manipulate the masses of the people with their propaganda, with the narrative that they're pushing. And since most fighters are not, they don't have public relations to that degree as it relate to, um, how it works on social media and stuff like that. This is this is what they do. I notice what they do. You know what I mean? If it's the fighter that that's um, if it's put it this way, fighter A can say, "Hey, I want to know about this, this, and this," because you're making money from endorsements. You know, you're making money from sponsors. You have international TV, television rights that you've been getting paid on. I want to know about that. I want to get a percentage of that. I need some transparency. What you mean you need transparency? You you ain't getting no transparency from such and such. Of course, he wasn't getting transparency from, transparency from such and such. But now that he know that he should get that, now he's asking for that. What you mean? You, what you, why are you asking for that? You know, you don't just take what they give you. Because he black, he look like you. It's the dumbest shit in the world. And this is why I say a, a, a fighter should never take advice from a two-figure nigga. You got two figure niggas on YouTube and 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 um and boxing Twitter telling fighters they don't know nothing about business at all. Nigga, you don't even know how to negotiate um how to get a raise at your job if you have one, but you're gonna tell a guy who got a net worth of seven, eight figures, you know, how he should handle business because you you shaking your pom poms, as Ron Boy Fresh would say, for a promotional company and a network. You can't make this shit up. Uh call what's your name to call it from? Jamie from New York. Jamie from New York, talk to me. Hey, Coach, great interview, man. That was awesome. I learned so much from that man, you know, very instructive. Mm -hmm. You know, I know boxing, but I don't know shit about the business of boxing, especially about no corner, man. Nobody ever talks about corner, man, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, he's been in the game a long time. He seems like a cool dude. Um, again, I, 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 I love the interview, man. I learned so much, you know. Um, um, uh, whatever. Um, but, yeah, man, uh, I, I, uh, he was talking about... Um, that fee, that thirty-three percent fee, coach. I, I thought I thirty-three and a third. I thought, yeah, <laughs> coach. I I was under the impression that that was the the uh, the promoters that charge fighters that much, but it's, it's, it's actually the manager, bro. Like these motherfuckers don't do shit, but phone, make phone calls, like you said. 
uh, uh, the, the promoter, the promoter do the same thing. Thirty three. Hey, I think too. Hey, hey, them. You know what they said? Them notorious Don King contract. Listen, my, yeah. my, 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 listen. My son Carl is gonna be your manager. So Don King's yeah, son Carl, is the yeah, manager. Carl. He gonna get thirty three percent. And then Don gonna get thirty three percent. Yeah, baby, see what it is. See, you know that sixty six percent going right there, baby. Now you know what, I'm, you know what I mean. Yeah. Now, Carl, Carl, Carl King is another crook, bro. Another one, coach. Not a other, not a other thirty, not a other thirty four percent. You gonna get that? But see, now we gotta take out expenses now, baby. Now remember the money that I gave you. Yeah, I remember the money. Remember the towels and stuff and the water you were drinking. Yo, see, we gotta subtract all of that. Yep. So when I laugh, when they sit back and say, you know, uh, listen, you know, you know, you know, you know, they say. Uh, him, he got them. He got them death row contracts, the record company contracts. So you think, yo, man, he taking care of us. He giving us advances and this and that and yada yada yada. Yeah. But we we bowling. You know, I got a chain. I got a Lambo with do it die those. I got this. I got that. Man, these people, these people sitting here, man. I ain't, <laughs> they finna recoup all that shit. Yeah. 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 They they have to. They will recoup it they, one way or another, man. They gonna get the money back. And and go. I, I'm gonna tell you, man. I, I remember. Uh, I read this somewhere or heard about it. A Don King, um, it was a Mike Tyson fight. He was like charging Mike Tyson three thousand dollars a day for towels, some crazy shit. Fifty thousand. And I, like, I don't know about a day, but I heard it was fifty thousand. Oh, fifty. Oh, okay, okay. But it was a lot of money, man. Either way, I think Felix trained that too. When he um, he caught on to that when he fought um Hopkins at the Garden. I think he had a, a, a um, there was something, something between the two. They they were they were beefing about it. Some crazy chargers, man. Yeah, but. Anyway, for Coach, man, that was a, a beautiful interview, man. Congratulations, bro. And that's all I got, man. I I'm out. Know, fam. Peace. Yeah, hey, motherfucker, sit there. Hey, they sitting back. <laughs> hey. Hey, listen. Hey, hey, shout out to Philly Fanatic. Hey, Philly Fanatic, you sit back and listen to these broke-ass niggas on YouTube and Boston Twitter. Yeah, man, take what they give you. Why Why you Why you want to know about that? Why you asking all them questions, fool? Y'all don't say that with Canelo. Canelo want that. That different. That different. Cause he, he Canelo. He can do what he want to do. But that nigga over there from Omaha, Nebraska, tell that nigga to shut up and do what we tell him to do. You can't make this shit up. Uh, Carl, hold on. This is why I told you guys. I've been watching Boston a long time, dog. I've never seen a time where fans argued on behalf of promoters and networks. You can't make this shit up. Hey, shout out to Larry Lopez. You can't make this shit up. What part of the game of being a fan of the sport of boxing where boxing fans argue on behalf of promotional companies and networks? Like, like, bro, I, I don't, you know what, I, 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 I checked out. I, I, honestly, I checked out this shit. Um, Carter, what's your name? What's Carter from? What's up, Coach? Hey, glad to have you back. This is Coach Eddie from ATL. Coach Eddie from ATL, talk to me. Yes, yeah, so I want to touch on something with, with a good interview, by the way, with a, talking about the manager and how you manage boxers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to get a guy like back when I was fighting, you could find you a can for a four-round fight and pay him $400. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, the going rate for a can is $2,000 for a four-round fight, and the fight ain't going to last for 30 seconds. So in order for you to get a guy to 10 and 0, you would have to pay about $25,000 to mm -hmm. get your fighter to 10 and 0 as a manager. But that's why a lot of times they be charging that 33% because you're paying for the opponent, then you're paying your guy, and then you're probably paying him a little money so he don't have to work and train stuff. So you you really rolling the dice. It's like, it's like you're sitting at the crap table, I get it. and you betting on the guy betting that this guy gonna pan out. You see what I'm saying? Lose your money. That's why all these fighters that ain't no good, man. Um, 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 hold on. This guy, this guy said, who told you that? This guy said that uh Crawford isn't a draw, okay, a propaganda, and wants fifteen million to fight. Kinda hard to make fights for him. Um, you know the crazy part about that? This guy, see, this is this is see, I'm let me show you guys something. Let me show you guys something. I wanna use this as a teaching point. So, hold on, hold on, Coach Eddie. Yo, so where this guy? Y'all see this right here? This is our propaganda. This this is a classic case of propaganda. Let me click him. He might be a troll. He might more than likely he's a troll. I'm pretty sure he is. Uh, but but I want I want to use this guy. I want to use this guy as a teaching. Yeah, this is this is a troll. But that's okay. That's okay. I want to use this troll as as a uh, as a teaching point. Now, if you listen to the interview with Nesta Gibbs, they had uh, they had uh, uh. Samson Lewis on there. Some say scumsome, 
Some say scam, scam, scam some little wits on there, right? <laughs> scam some little wits say that Crawford won $15 million. He won too much money, this and that. Now, the question was asked. Let me show you how people have selective he hearing. The question was asked, where did you get that from? Did you get that from Terrence Crawford? He said no. Did you get that from anyone from Terrence Crawford's team, like his attorneys who, so who negotiated his contract? He said no. He said, where did you get that from? He said, that's what I heard. So this guy is repeating what a liar said on YouTube, Scamson Lewis, a manager of David Benavidez, who's a pro PBC guy. He, 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 he's down with the PBC. And when they asked him, where did you get that from? He said, that's what I heard. So you are repeating a lie that Samson Lewis said that he didn't, he admitted, I didn't get that number from Crawford. I didn't get that number from his attorney. I didn't get that number from his manager. That's what I heard. So this nigga in the chat has face of boxing. This nigga is repeating a lie that he heard from the guy who confirmed that he didn't even get that from Crawford. Did, did you see, you see, y'all see how the propaganda works? I mean, he's choosing to believe it, and he has a right to do that, but that's, that's what these niggas do. But go, go ahead, Coach Eddie, sorry about that. Oh, yeah, that's right, man. You know, they like to spread uh, lies and rumors, man. But like I say, Samson, he, he trying to do his best for his fighter. He know that Sebastian, you know, he won the belt, and the chance of him holding on to be that belt for a very long time, is, you know, is not very good. So he just trying to maximize this guy, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day. He just, they don't want to fight Crawford because you know Crawford more than likely going to beat Sebastian for that belt and minimize the man money. So Hold on, at the me, end of the day, man, go let ahead. Me, let, me, let, me, let me address this. Now, this guy say, so what will, it, what will he take? Don't call him a liar if you don't know what he'll take. This is the crazy part about it. You totally missed the point. He's a liar. Because if you don't know what he'll take, why are you making shit up? The whole point of what I'm saying is he admitted that he made the shit up. He said that's what he heard. So if the, if the promoter, the manager who's putting that information out there is telling you that he didn't get it from Crawford, that means he's making the shit up. But I get it. I, I mean, listen, I get your angle. I get it. He's a liar. I'm going to call him what the fuck I want to call him. He's a liar, period. Because I know he lying. I know that for a fact. You get what I'm saying? You don't, you don't, you don't have the relationship that I have with him, but it is, but um, with, with, uh, with Bud. So, but, but, but it's fine. It's fine. It is with it. I, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Think what you want to think. I, don't, I give two fucks. I know, I know you niggas angle. I know who you hate. I know who you're all in against, and that's fine. Just say, look, I hate the nigga, and I'm going to just say what I want to say, the, the smirchify the nigga name, whatever. Just say that. But I never thought I'd see a time in boxing where you got, and I got, and I got to call y'all, I got to call it for what it is. You know what? I, I, I'm going to call you a name, but I'm not going to do that. I just never thought I'd see a time in boxing to where, Boxing fans take the sides of managers and promoters and they shake their pom poms for them because of that hatred of a fighter. I've never seen that before. Like, never. I've been, I'm 50 years old. I've never seen that before. But in this day and time, I get it. I do get it. Y'all, but y'all, 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 y'all some real, y'all, y'all some real fuckboys, though. Y'all some real dick in the booty fuckboys, like, for real, though. Uh, go ahead, Coach Ed. I didn't mean to talk up your time. Go ahead. Oh, no, that's cool, man. I mean, hey, it's your show, Code Up. That's good information, though. But that, like I said, at the end of the day, man, these guys, they're going to run with these narratives. You know what I'm saying? And you can you can say that the Internet gave birth to a lot of these guys, man. You know what I'm saying? You So, like I say, man, good show today. Keep doing what you're doing. Glad to have you back, Coach. All right, salute. Yeah, these niggas be making shit up. <laughs> these niggas be making shit up. Hey, phone lines open, though, man. Any, any one of you niggas want to call? Any one of you niggas want to call? I know y'all ain't going to call the show. But any one of you niggas want to call, call the show. Call the show. I would love to. I would love to get you niggas on the phone. Please call the show. Because I ain't finna be going back and forth with no niggas in the chat. I'm actually, from, from a matter of fact, finna ignore y'all ass. Um, the, the, uh, the two whole niggas I'm talking about in the chat. Uh, shout out to uh, Miss Parker. What's going on, Miss Parker? Uh, shout out to, shout out to Damien. What's going on, fam? He said, I don't think they hate him. Just trying to break Bud and make him sign a long term with a promo company. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not even talking about, um, the promoters, I get their angle. I'm, ta I'm talking about these. I'm talking about these. Uh, I'm talking about these modern day boxing fans online. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about these niggas. <laughs> these niggas is boy. These some. Are, these some hell of a niggas. These some hell of a niggas. These hell of a niggas. Um, somebody said, "What will it take?" I don't know what number it take, but I'm not gonna make no shit up. That's the whole thing. I don't know. If I don't know something, I'm not gonna make no shit up. I'm telling you the game. I know the game. 
I know the game very well, but it's cool. I ain't, I'm not, I'm not even here to talk about that. It's cool, shit. Think what you want to think, nigga. I don't give a fuck. Um, call what's your name? You call it from? Hey, it's Ryan Fraser from Toronto, Canada. Uh, you say Ryan Fraser? What up, coach? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on? Salute to you, fam. Talk to me. Um, that was a good interview, man. You, we usually don't get that perspective from boxing, like from a cut man, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's good to hear from one of these guys because they be in the camps with the fighters also. So, like, they they really like family with the fighters. So, mm -hmm. it's nice to hear the business part of it and, you know, his information on the actual job that he does because I didn't know all that went into that, to be honest. Yeah. I just think it's a guy up there who may have a, a, a first aid certificate or something like that, but <laughs> these guys don't even have that. That's crazy. <laughs> that is they crazy. They don't even. <laughs> that is crazy, yeah. Yeah, like that's wild, man. To have a guy in your corner who may not even know how to really stop a cut, but just use Vaseline, like shit. it's wild. But um, I can, I can, I can, uh, shit, I can be a uh, I, that's good. I might well be a cut man. Don't worry about a dog. I got you. I got your dog. Look here. Don't worry. Hey, listen. Yeah. Don't, listen around. Don't worry about it. I got, I got you, baby boy. So you got a cut right here, right? Hey, yeah, man. Hey, give me, hey, give me, hey, give me some of that toilet paper. Give me some of that toilet paper right there. Let me. <laughs> yeah, trust me. I can press it real hard. I'm pressing real hard. I'm gonna stop it. <laughs> yeah, that's true, man. It's crazy, right? And um, it's that boxing though. Like you don't need nothing to be like you, anybody can be a boxer. Anybody can be a pro. Anybody can be a, a promoter, a manager. It's wild, man. It's not like the NBA. You ain't gotta go through no route. Like it's crazy. But um, I'm I'm glad he he spoke about the UFC thing because I've always harped on UFC for being that way. Like. They should allow all the fighters to get sponsorship so they can make money. Because they don't make shit over there, but mm. that's not my issue. I'm a boxing fan. And uh, shout out to you, Coach, for having them interviews. you listening out here in Canada. And we'll holler at you later, man. All right, salute, Peace. man. Shout out to Ron, Ron Fraser, man. Canada, stand up. Hey, you said funny, right? Hey, 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 funny, right? Because I'm like, damn, I was under the impression for real that, damn, you know, this dude, he'll go. Shit, uh, you know, I thought that they really did like go to some kind of uh, training or whatever. Um, cause I, I, because I think referees, the referees go through a process. I think the referees they come through the amateurs stuff like that. They have some of the uh, amateur fights. Uh, they work some of the amateur fights. I do know that. I remember we interviewed a referee from Texas last year, and he broke it down. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get that referee back on the show. I'm going to get that referee back on the show because it's always good to, like you said, get that perspective from those guys. Um, there's a lot of shit that they know. You get what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to Mr. Lemons. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub. He said, Coach, these fools are goofy, hating on the man they physically don't know. Oh, yeah, ain't, yeah, ain't nobody worried about these broke ass niggas. These niggas here, ain't nobody worried about these niggas. Let them, I mean, let them do what they do, type and say whatever. That, that's all. They ain't, ain't nobody worried about them. They know they don't they don't move the needle. They, them niggas broke and over here. They over here watching us, so they gonna stay over here too. Um, um, uh, Carla, what's your name? You call it from? It's Curtis from Long Beach. Curtis from Long Beach, talk to me. Man, these dudes trip me out, man. Like, don't Crawford got to turn something down first to say that you know he's he's asking for too much. Like, I haven't heard about them sending him anything that he rejected and said, hey, I want fifteen million. Like, yeah, they I mean, just you know. No, the guy, the, up the, the guy, the guy said that, you know, the guy said that he didn't, didn't, didn't even talk to the guy. So I'm like, you making this shit up. Yeah, he making it up and y'all running with the shit. Like, but I mean, y'all not saying nothing about the multiple offers that, that Tank turned down from uh, Eddie Hearn to fight Conor Ben and other fighters, you know what I'm saying? For 7 million, 10 million, 20 million. Like, y'all ain't saying nothing about that, but Okay. You ain't saying, well, what do Tank want? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The motherfucker asked for two Ferraris. I ain't saying shit. But it's a trip, though, man. But um, Stitch said something that I that I said from the beginning about Fondora, man. Like, it's a tough fight to go from, you know, preparing for a dude that's 5'7", mm -hmm. 5'10", to fighting a dude that's 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. You know what I mean? And once he got that cut, his corner should have... Yeah, his yeah. corner shit. Once he got that cut, and he was he was continuously wiping it wiping it away from his eyes and shit, they should have just stopped it. You know what I mean? And said, you know, before it got to the fourth round, they should have just stopped it. But yeah, uh, it just took the no contact. It, 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 yeah, it's it's something he said. He said that because it was a title fight that I guess everybody involved. It was like, man, they, it was a high stakes fight, high stakes title fight. Referee could have stopped it. That's why I actually could the referee could have stopped it. He said, yeah, the referee could have said. No, nah, man, this is, this is just too bad. Um, but he didn't do it. 
um, the doctor didn't do it, and Tim Zoo team, they didn't do it. So, you know, it, it, you know, it, it's safe to say that maybe Tim Zhu was failed on um, on three on all three levels, from the ref to the doctors, uh, but definitely his corner. Forget the ref. Definitely his corner let him down. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I think I think it's obvious at that point. Yeah, it was his corner. They should have, you know what I mean? For one, I think they shouldn't even took the fight. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a tough fight to take on short notice. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. The dude being knocked out. Man, that dude got physical advantages that you didn't train for. So that's just a tough fight from the jump. Mm -hmm. So with that cut, it made it even harder because now it's, you can't really see. And now he just going to use his advantages and use the, the blood in your face to just jab you all night. Mm -hmm. so they, they should have stopped that shit, but good interview. I appreciate the information. These dudes need to, need to stop running with all this wild-ass information. Dudes can't even negotiate their child support. How are you going <laughs> to negotiate a million-dollar deal for, for coffee? What the fuck y'all talking about, man? I get right, it. Man, I I'm get out. it. I get it. They, but they, they tell on themselves every time. I get it. Uh, let's give uh, Ron Bar uh, um, uh, Curtis from Long Beach a round of applause. <laughs> hey, I get it. 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 I get it, boy. I get it, boy. These, boy, these, these niggas, these, boy, these, boy, these, these PBC, these PBC boxing fans, they something else. I give them that. I give them that. They something else. Anyways, uh, they ain't gonna call the show though. They never do. Um, but they got my attention for like five minutes. I'm done. I'm not. They can type to their lips fall off. I ain't looking at it. Uh, shout out to RB the Baller. Salute to you, fam. Shout out to G5. Shout out to the Wise One. Knockdown 305. Shout out to Philly Fanatic. Uh, shout out to Legacy Mindset. What's going on, fam? Yeah, man, doggone uh, Tim Zoo. Uh, call, call her, hold on. You know, the crazy part about it, Tim Zoo. I mean, just imagine how he feels right now. He's like, man, I lost to a guy that, that I, I probably would have knocked out with, with less than six rounds. Because I think, I think he would have knocked out Fendor. I picked him to knock him out, but Fendor won the fight. Um, he did work behind the jab later on in the fight. He did that. He was still getting caught with some shots. He didn't go down. But just imagine that, though, like, Tim Zoo probably like, man, I lost my goddamn belt, man, to this tall, lanky motherfucker. This motherfucker here, man, like, this is easy work, and it's just unfortunate for him. So he got to wait till late on this year. So it looked like Fendora and uh, Zoo, they they going to be out till part of the end of the year for their rematch again. But uh, in the meantime, one of those belts got to be released. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where from? Hey, what's going on? You're too rich from Sports Eye. Too rich from Sports Eye. Talk to me. Hey, what's going on, man? Um, I saw the interview with um, the Boxing Voice, but I also saw uh, saw the interview on Pro Box mm -hmm. with uh, Sam. And um, then he mentioned that it was a verbal agreement with Tim Zoo for the rematch. rematch. They all laughed on Pro Box. <laughs> and what I took, and what I took from that, <laughs> what I took from laugh. that was. What I told you before when I called about the matchup between Errol Spence and Fundora, PBC don't want that matchup. That's not a good matchup for Spence. Yeah. So they're falling off the Spence rematch in order to give Tim Zoo, I mean, a, a, a Spence fight to give Tim Zoo the rematch because they don't want the uh, Fundora Spence matchup. That's not a good matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, Spence supposed to be so damaged that he couldn't do the Crawford rematch right now. So if Fundora is not going to be ready to maybe November, they could still do that fight with Fundora and Spence. But that that's not a good matchup for Spence. No, nah, they can't and do that because Fundora, Fundora they, they're saying Fundora won't, won't be back until September because he had the broken nose. So both both Fundora and uh, Tim Zoo is off the table. Yeah, but, but is Spence ready, though? He just, You remember um, yeah, he right. the, the, the guy said nah, right. that Spence uh, wasn't ready to do the uh, rematch with um, Crawford. You know what? It's amazing you said that. I was looking at a video today by Blue Blood Sports TV, and and I think that was the argument that he made. He said, "Okay, so since Errol Spence is back, and a lot of his fans say that the reason why he didn't perform was because he was weight drained. Okay, now if he's ready to fight Fundora, the winner of Tim uh, Fundora and Tim Zoo, then okay, now both of them are off the table. Both of them off the table. Okay, you yeah, you, you, you can yeah. be ready. Okay, so." You and Crawford. This is what Blue Blood was saying. You and Crawford can get back in there, but no, nah, they don't. They don't. Yeah, they don't. They don't want that. He ready. Um, but he ready though. He ready. Yeah. They don't want that fight. Yeah, but I still, I, 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 I just don't think that that's a that's a good matchup for Spence anyway. And also, 
Sam also said, I think on the boxing boys, uh, that the PBC makes the final decision. You see what I mean? So mm-hmm. for them to me kind of walk back, I know they don't want to fight Crawford. They can't beat Crawford. That's a big issue with that. They can't beat him. And Spence is a more beatable, a winnable fight for uh, Fandora than Crawford. But, yeah, I just think, you know, once again, it's the politics, man. It's just the politics. I don't know which way Bud go, but, you know, it'll work out for him. Yeah, yeah, all right. All right, salute, man. Shout out to two, uh, shout out to two rings, right. man. Salute, brother. Yeah, um... Yeah, um, I think I think them rematching, you know, them rematching, the thing is they're not gonna fight till later on this year. So um Bud and Spence and it's three fighters that haven't fought since July. Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, um, Jerron Boost Ennis. It's a couple of fighters, and it's some fighters that haven't fought longer than that. Um Bud fights once a year anyways. Spence normally fights twice a year, but he's been fighting once a year as of late. So Boots is normally more active, but he hasn't fought since July of last year. Um, Steven Espinosa is advising him. That's his advisor. So, um, and the thing is, is, you know, boxing is going to keep going. It's going to keep going. Fights are still going to happen. Fights are still going to happen. Hell, even even someone like Canelo. Canelo has 64 fights. He's going on his 65th professional fight at 30. He's 33. I think he'll be 30. And when will Canelo be 34? Is it this summer? Shout out to your boy Mumbo. When will Canelo? When will Canelo be 34? I think this summer, right? I think. I think. Uh, I think. I think this summer. Uh, um, yeah, he'll be 34. I think. I think this summer. So, this is going to be his 65th professional fight. Like, bro, when I sit back and look at, look at all the fights that this guy's had, Canelo. I'm like, damn, is this going to be his 65th fight? Now he had a lot of those fights in Mexico, of course. Um, you know, back then you can, you know, you know when you first coming up, when you first coming up, you can fight. You no, know, you 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 probably have shit. I remember you probably have 10 fights in a month. You'll have 10 fights in a month. You get what I'm saying? Something of that sort. But but just even in today's time, 65 fights, that's a lot of goddamn fights, fam. For anybody. I don't give a damn how old you are. 65 fights is a lot of fights. Jaime Munguia have about, what, 44 fights? Zerto have about 50, no, 40, 46 fights or something of that sort. So you got some fighters out there. They have had a lot of fights, bro. Like Bud have 40. Um... Shit. Uh, Chocolatito. I gotta, you know, I gotta sit back. I gotta sit back and look. Like, it's some fighters that's active right now. They, you know, like they really, boy, they don't. They've been having some fights, fam. But just think about that: sixty-five fights. That's a lot of fights, bro. I don't listen. I don't give a damn. Um, I don't give a damn who that is, bro. That's a lot of fights, bro. A lot of fights. You get what I'm saying? For in, for any goddamn body, especially especially at this stage, you know. Shout out to Tila. Tila, what's going on, sis? So Rando, he said that's a whole lot of fights. Yeah, that is a whole lot of fights. That listen, that is a whole lot of fights. Like that, that's that's a lot of fights, bro. For real, whole lot of fights. You right about that. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking about it, right? I'm like, man, that man don't had a lot of fights, man. And and, and Canelo was still fighting twice a year. And getting paid thirty-five million dollars guaranteed. You get what I'm saying? Like, bro, that's that's a hell of a that's a hell of a guaranteed per thirty-five million plus what they say the back end. <laughs> yeah, she no, she what we got to do now. Now we got to we got we got to look at the back end now. She the back end is well. I'm like, bro, these niggas, they, boy, Lord have mercy, these niggas is, is funny, funny. Um, shout out to uh, Stephen S. Yeah, AJ, you right about that, Stephen S. AJ, Anthony Joshua, and Parker are very active. Especially amongst big name fighters. Like, hey, check this out, Steven. Anthony Joshua, he's had four fights in 11 months. The last fight he had against Francis Ngano, that was his fourth fight in 11 months. Let, hey, hey, Steven, let that sink in. That was his fourth fight in 11 months. Four. So, out of the big name fighters, he's definitely the most active because you know what what big name fighter you know is having four fights and the crazy part about it is this 
I saw an interview with Anthony Joshua. Joshua said that he just wants to stay active. He didn't want to sit and wait around. He'll fight whoever. He know he can't get Usyk. He fought Usyk twice. Usyk beat him. He can't get Tyson Fury. They fight each other. He know that. So he said, look, I'll fight whoever. He'll fight Ergovich. It doesn't matter. He doesn't, he'll fight whoever. And the thing is, in this day and time, what I love about what Anthony Joshua was doing, at least he's staying busy. He's staying busy. He's not sitting around. He's not waiting. He's doing his thing. He's staying busy. He's staying sharp. And I think the more fights that he have with Ben Davidson, because Joshua seemed like, you know, he got a lot of, uh, he's gotten better under Ben Davidson, a lot more comfortable. He looks a lot better with Ben Davidson than he did, than he did uh, Derek James, to be fair. It, it was like he was thinking too much and stuff like that. But Ben Davidson, what, he, what I like about what Ben Davidson does, Ben Davidson is an underrated trainer in my opinion. Like I really, really like Ben Davidson. He's a really good trainer. Uh, my main man, Buddy McGirt, kept fellow Capricorn born the same day. Buddy McGirt is a, is a Buddy McGirt is an old school trainer. He's one of those old school guys. Um, good trainers. Uh, Ronnie Shields is a good trainer as well. If he's allowed to train, um, there's some good ones out there. Robert Garcia, I love Robert Garcia as well. You know, there's there's some good trainers out there, fam. There's some good trainers out there. Some good trainers. Some really good trainers. Bo Mac. Bo Magnum, there's some good trainers. Uh, Derek James is a good, good trainer. Um, oh, Mush Mouth. Yeah, but Derek James is a good trainer. Um, some other guys. It's, it's, some, it's some other guys. It's some other guys I'm missing. Some other guys I'm missing. But, but you know, you know. Uh, shout out to Jessica. She said that's because he tried to figure it out <laughs> what DJ was saying. <laughs> he tried to. <laughs> Hey, shout out to Miss Parker. She say, uh, she say, uh, that's because, uh, that's because he tried to figure out what, uh, what Derek James is saying. Um, uh, shout out to uh, Nate. What you say that? You say Bozy, Bozy. Yeah. Um, how many, how many fighters does Bozy have? How many fighters does Bozy have? I don't know. I don't know how many fighters he have. I know he trained Boots, but um, I don't know how many fighters. You know what? I, th I think I saw him training. He got another fighter. What, what, hey, what's the, uh, what's the other fighter that Bozy is training? What's the other fighter Bose is training? Uh, damn, I saw him on, I want to say the, the, the zone card. I want to say the, yeah, Andy Cruz. Yeah, that's what it was, Andy Cruz. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 the zone, was that, that was the, the zone card, right? Was that, was that the, the zone card or was that, um, uh, damn, we just saw Andy Cruz fight. Oh, they said, yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Bozy. So yeah, we got, we got, we got, listen, we got some good, we got some good, we got some good trainers out there. Some good trainers out there, man. Um, I remember I was listening to, what's the dude name that Steve Kim interviewed? Steve Kim interviewed, uh, damn, what's his name? Hernandez, I gotta look him up. He, now he, now he an old school trainer. Uh, hold on, let me look him up. Who that dude was that, uh, Rudy Hernandez. Rudy was it Rudy? I think it was Rudy Hernandez. Uh, Steve Kim interviewed him, and man, he man that dude, that boy. Listen, <laughs> that motherfucker funny, and I'm a hey, <laughs> and I'm a, 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 He said he don't like he don't like uh he don't like uh strength. What it was he don't like strength and conditioning coaches. You know, back in the day, back in the day they didn't have a strength and conditioning coach. You get what I'm saying? Now you know we got the we, listen. We got the strength and conditioning coach. We got you know we got the uh uh uh. Yeah, well, no, they got yeah. We got a restricted conditioning coach. We got to listen. We got a, We got a nutritionist to shelf. You know, back in the day, back in the day, your wife, back in the day, your wife was a nutritionist. Baby, go in there. Listen, I'm eating bologna sandwiches. Okay, I'm in training camp. I mean, bologna sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, Rudy her there. That's what they root her there. Hey, listen, hey, bro, that was a fire interview. That was a fire interview Steve did with Rudy. Bro, Rudy, bro, Rudy, that's a fireball there, bro. Hey, uh, what you say, Freddie Rose? Yeah, Freddie Rose is a good trainer, too. Rudy is a fireball. Hey, but listen, man, uh, I, I listen, I, <laughs> that motherfucker, yeah, boy. Hey, no nonsense, dude. Yeah, man, you know, back in the day, your strength and conditioning coach was your wife. No, uh, your, 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 uh, your chef was your wife. Listen, I mean, below the sandwiches, uh, you know, um, all, you know, these next two, these next six weeks, and, and, and they wasn't in training camp that long either. They wasn't having 12 and 10, 11 week training camps. Nah, nigga, we, uh, hey, hold on. How, how much, how long do you need to get ready for this fight? I need about five, six weeks. 
I'll be ready. Five, six weeks. We ain't listen, we ain't training for six, seven months to get ready for no goddamn fight. No, you get what I'm saying? So, um, and I think it, but you gotta understand too, they they fought more regular. I think when you fight regular, more regular, you 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 will stay you stay in shape. You stay in shape when you fight more regular. You get what I'm saying? So you stay in shape when you fight more regular, and then um you don't have to have these long training camps. You don't have to have these long training camps, you know? So it is what it is. That's why you should, that's why you should fight regular. You know, because you have these long training accounts, these grueling sparring sessions. If the dude is really there to spar, if he's if he not there just to come lay down and let you beat up on him, if he's there to really fight and spar, you have these long sparring sessions. But if you stay active, if you're fighting, if you're a fighter and you're fighting like, like a fighter fighting twice a year in today's time is considered a lot. A fighter that's fighting twice a year in today's time is considered a lot. But now it's like, man, you know, again, as I said before, you got all this shit. You got the strength and conditioning coach. You got, you know, no, you just had a trainer. The trainer was the strength and conditioning coach. You know, that, that I mean, they didn't even have that title, but you get what I'm saying. But the trainer's the one we're going to get you in shape. You're going to run old school way. We're going we gonna to run, spar. Um, now, you know what I see? I see a lot of, I can't even call these dudes trainers. I mean, I can't do what they do myself, but... I see a lot of guys, they look real good with the hand mitts. And shout out to Roger Mayweather, RIP to Roger Mayweather. Roger Mayweather and Floyd made that popular. The hand mitt, the hand mitt champion. So you seeing all this pretty stuff with the hand mitts. Oh boy, you saw he hit them hand mitts? What you think he gonna do in the ring? And that came from Floyd. Floyd Mayweather popularized that. For him, him and Floyd and Roger. And um, and yeah, can't forget about can't forget about not only Roger, but oh, hold on, but can't forget about Floyd Sr. Floyd Senior, he mean with the with the hand mitt real work too. So that so so they made that popular. <laughs> yeah, boy, you see you see how he did that. You see how he did that. You you see you see the sounds it was making when you look at LeBron. When you look at um, you look at film of Salvador Sanchez or Julio Cesar Chavez or or a Zuba Nelson or Pernell Whitaker. You look listen, Mike Tyson. You look at all this. When well, you see Mike Tyson now hitting the hand mitts and stuff. But I'm saying if you look at Lennox Lewis, you 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 ain't see. <laughs> Hey, shout out to Dr. Paul Evans. Hey, you didn't see, uh, like, these niggas are glorifying hand mitt champions. Yeah, boy, you see where he hit them hand mitts? Well, shit, well, that shit, it looked pretty. It looked pretty. But there's a question I got to ask you. When have you ever seen a fighter do it in the ring? I remember I was in L.A. I was in L.A. Steve took me over to, um, I forgot the gym that we went to. It was, a, it was a gym that Buddy McGirt was training at this particular day. Um, he blessed me with the interview. I have it on my, have it on my, um, in my, in my, um, in my library. And we was inside the gym right now. This, this part that I'm going to, the story I'm going to tell you is not, is not on the interview. This is what we said prior to the interview, right? So we sitting there, right? So he said, man, I had this kid come up to me and this kid wanted me to train him, right? And he said, hey, listen, listen, man, I want you to train me. I heard a lot about you. Uh, can you, can you, uh, can you do the hand mitts like Floyd, like, like Roger Mayweather, <laughs> like Floyd Mayweather? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Can you train me? I want you to train me, man. Can you do, can you do the, uh, can you do the hand mitts? Can you do the hand mitts like Roger, like, like, like Floyd Mayweather? And so, and so, <laughs> and so, so, uh, 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 Bottom McGurk looked at him. He said, he said, no. He said, can you fight like Floyd Mayweather? <laughs> So let me get this straight. <laughs> the dude wanted, he wanted Buddy McGurk. Yes, yeah, I, I want you to, I want you to like, can you do the hand miss like Floyd Mayweather? He said, no, I can't do that. Can you, can you, can you fight like Floyd Mayweather? And then he said this. He said, all that stuff you see Floyd do with the hand miss and looking to the side and stuff like that. He say, do you see him do that in the ring? The answer is no. He don't do that in the ring. True, true, true. He don't do that shit in the ring. <laughs> that shit, that shit, hey, that shit, hey, that shit look good. That shit look good. You know what I mean? Yeah, boy. You see, boy, you walk out of town. The no look. He put the hand behind the back. He turned around and caught it behind the back. And I'm like, hey, listen, go in the ring, go in the ring, trying that shit. And watch what happened. <laughs> Hey, Steven, check this out. Go in the ring and try that shit. Yeah, yeah, boy. The no look. But that was the no look right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you could, listen, you could do that to a tomato can. 
You ain't gonna do that to no world class fighter. I ain't see Sugar Ray doing it. And now I'm not saying fighters don't showboat. Uh, Prince, I seen my man. He showboated, did his thing. Prince, I seen my man showboated. But I'm just saying. Uh, but you get what I'm saying. I want. I want to see you get in the ring. Get in the ring with. A, get in the ring with a killer and do that. <laughs> and watch what happened. <laughs> Carla, what's the name where you calling from? What's up, coach? This is um, Derek from Florida. Derek from Florida, talk to me. Yeah, cause I got a question on the um the 140 division though. We got like Tears, Teal, Devin, and now we got um East South Crew. So who, who do you think like they mix it up and fight each other? Who think who come to top? Like you know who will come to top? They don't fights happen. They gotta fight. They gotta fight each other so we can see. I can't. I can't guess that. To be honest with you. Yeah, I'll, you you would love to see it, Cole? You think you think it's possible they can make it happen? Um, anything is possible, but uh, in, in 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 today's climate in boxing. Um, it looks mm -hmm. like it looks like promoters, these promotional guys, uh, they do everything in their power to not make fights. And um, so mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I, I ain't gonna lie, Cruz. I, I would love to see that Lopez. I'm just saying that every Lopez versus Cruz, that that'll be like a interesting match, though. Like I want to see how Teal, how he fight, you know, how people bring that pressure. He be throwing them overhand rights. Mm -hmm. I want to see how he reacts, though, because he could get clipped too. I won't be shocked, like you know. It pitbull, you know, put them hands on them too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll just, yeah, we'll, we'll, just, we'll, just have, we'll just we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. You know, if those, those fights get made, it's it's it just um uh you know uh you know these fights have to happen at the right time. This and that. It it just seemed like to me a lot of these guys, these power brokers in boxing, they are in the way, and they are in the mm -hmm. business of um just not really making the. Uh, the type of fights that we would love. It, it's just a different era. So, um, yeah. I, I won't, but I won't know. It's kind of hard to guess who would win because styles make fights. The only way we're really going to know, we yeah. got to see the fight. That's yeah, you got to see, though. Yeah, that would be good, though. All right, coach. All right, salute, fam. Shout out to Derek, man. Um, yeah, man. I mean, bro, it, it's, bro, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, um, it's kind of, um, uh, Pitbull has to learn how to jab. Uh, somebody, somebody with, somebody with, uh, somebody that has footwork is going to always beat somebody like him, you know, cause, um, uh, that's why I say someone like, so, somebody would, like, I, I'm of the opinion that Tank is going to, Tank and Pitbull is going to fight each other later on, probably this year, probably this year. Cause that fight is always there for Tank to go get at 140. Um, but I'm under, I'm on, I'm under the impression, I'm under the impression that, um, uh, because Pitbull fights the exact same way. He fights the exact same way. Somebody with some footwork, as long as you stay away from the bombs, you can just keep the jab in his face because he doesn't, he doesn't work a jab. He doesn't, you know what I mean? He doesn't work a jab at all. He doesn't have a jab at all. Um, and he pretty much ran through rolling like wet toilet paper. But you can, you can do that to roll it. Roll ain't no goddamn body shit. You know what I mean? You know, roll it, roll it, Romero, roll it, Romero ain't nobody. You get what I'm saying? True, true. True. Yeah, he Rolly ain't nobody at all. So it's easy. It, 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 it was easy to run through goddamn Rolly Romero. I even saw an interview with Booger Ray Leonard was saying uh, why he loved Rolly so much and all of this stuff there. And Rolly is the only guy that calls and check up on him. Yeah, he's the only guy that calls and check up on me. I mean, hey, hey, Floyd, don't call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all need to y'all need to hear this interview, right? He said, "Yeah, uh, yeah, man, you know, I mean, I, I, I think that was on. Um, I think he did that interview. He did that interview on on Sean Porter podcast. He said, "Yeah, man, I love that guy, man. Rolly is the only one that calls and checks up on me. I'm like, damn, Floyd, Mister, um, like I said before, Floyd, Floyd don't call you and check up on you. So Floyd don't, so Floyd don't call and check up on you, Booger Ray. That's a shame. Um, call him, What's the name of your caller from? Yo, Coach, this is Mason from Flint, Michigan. What's going on with you, boss? Mason from Flint. Talk to me, fam. Hey, man, um, my whole thing, right? Uh, Pitbull, everybody gassed up about this Pitbull win, right? <laughs> but Rowley wasn't shit to begin with. <laughs> so it's almost like, yeah, that's cute and all, but yeah. nigga, you did that to a C-Class. And like you say, anybody with some footwork and some and some good fundamentals yeah. will outbox that shit, you know, twice on Sunday, man. That all that wild ass shit, leaving your jab at home at yeah. every fight. Yeah, Pitbull gotta he got he gotta uh he gotta add more more to his arsenal than 
than just bolo punches all fight, man. But <laughs> he whooped Roley's ass pretty good, and he restored Ron Boy's uh, beloved 140 division and put some real killers in the top ten. So, but good interview with Stitch, man, and uh, – that's pretty much all I had to say, man. Don't get gassed up about the pit bull win, man. Roley wasn't shit to begin with. All right, man. Well, hey, shout out, shout out to my man, my brother, man, Mason for Flint. Salute, fam. Yeah, man. Motherfucking Roley, man. Shit. Hey, hey, hey. I think I think Mason gave him too much credit. He said he said pit bull, pit bull. He said Roley was a C class fighter. Shit, he a D class fighter. Shit, yeah. <laughs> Roley a D class fighter. Hey, listen. Calling Roland Romero a C-class fighter is disrespect to C-class fighters. Like he's, I've always said he was trash. Like I always said he was trash. I say, bro, what was his claim to fame? His claim to fame is getting knocked out by Tank Davis. That's it. He lost against, he lost to Jackson Marinez. Jackson Marinez beat his ass. They robbed Jackson Marinez. Y'all remember that fight? I boss him like Roland, Roland might have won one round that fight. One of maybe two rounds of him being generous. He like he got out bossed by Jackson Marinez. They robbed him. He gave it to Roley. I, I even saw the look on their face when the, when the scorecards are read. Um, and uh, you know, and the winner is Roley Romero. Roley was like, "I won for real. For I won. Damn, like here, <laughs> they they both were bossing the shit out of me. I won for real. Damn. Anyways, uh, Carla, what's your name? You call it from? What's going on, Coach? This is Demetrius from Murder Beach. Demetrius from Murder Beach. Talk to me, fam. Man, Coach, Roller, I already look like he punched you off. Well, he be talking. Yeah, man, like, for he real. He had some major trauma in his head, man. I mean, all the, I mean, yeah, that's a hit. Calling him a C-class fighter is disrespectful to uh, Port Charlie and, and Shorty <laughs> Big Nut. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> this is, this, 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 that's a step they face. That guy's pushing me, Coach. Was Tim Zoo's dad was was Kasha Zoo in that corner when he was fighting the other night? Nah, I don't think I don't think his I don't I don't think his dad was in the corner. Okay, you think if his dad was in the corner? How do you think that fight was played? Like, you think his dad was? I, I, I think his dad would have stopped because he's smart enough to know. Yeah, his, his he dad, in the fourth round. Yeah, should we go? Yeah, no, no, I think I think his dad would have stopped it. I think I think his dad would have stopped it. Okay, so now, now do you think that had you think that that fight would tarnish any momentum that Zoo had? Before the fight, or you think people gonna look at him as a you know, as, as potential good fighter and a, and, a, and a possibly a great champion and a challenger for the big boys in that division? No, I mean no. I I think I think Tim Zoo was the goods. Um, everyone know that. Hey man, it, it was that cut because everyone everyone who called this show, you know, before I saw the fight, I went back and I went back and seen it. I went back and watched the fight. Um, the everyone who called this show and just everybody who I've seen online, pretty much are saying the same thing. They're saying that hey man. Uh, 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 that cut changed everything. That cut changed everything. If it wasn't for that cut, that dude would have been knocked out because he had a broken nose in the second round. So they said if it wasn't for that cut, yeah, Tim yeah. would have got him out of there. And then when I went back and watched it, I kind of agree with that. Yeah, I believe 100 percent with you, coach. Hey man, you might need you might need to put on. Uh, they might need to put their role in there with short, shorter big nuts, man. I got shorter big nuts. Have a good one, coach. All right, salute, fam. Yeah, man, shorter big nuts. Hey. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, shot at Big Nuts, shot at Big Nuts 21 and 0 in the hood. Shot at Big Nuts 21 and 0 in the hood. I'm sitting back, but I'm, anyway, back to the interview. I'm looking at the interview. He like, yeah, you know, man, Roley, Roley's the only one that checks on me. So Tank don't call and check on him. Floyd don't call and check on him. You get what I'm saying? So I said, oh, that's why, that's why you love, that's why you love Dog on Roley so much. Hey, so hey, listen. He so he ain't riding with Roley because Roley got boxing skills. <laughs> well, see, Roley boxing skills is impeccable. His footwork is second to none. You know, his defense is is on a whole nother level. The way he works the jab, you know, the way he slips and counters and this and that. No one ever gives you a a boxing breakdown about why you should root for Roley Romero. There, it's always it's always uh, it's always uh, uh, Oh man, Roley can sell a fight. Where where he can sell a fight at? 
Like, this is another thing, too, right? They create these fake ass narratives like Roller can sell a fight. How? Like, did you see the what did he sell when he fought dog on um when he fought um uh Ismael Barroso? They talking like this man doing, yeah, man, he can sell a fight, this and that. Everybody know this dude is one crayon short from the uh from from from, uh, from the from the um the short yellow bus with dark tinted windows. Like they create this shit like yeah, nigga, Roly, Roly can sell. Where? Where? Well, you saw what he did with Tank. That was because of Tank. Well, Roly sold the fight. He talked a lot of trash. Okay, that is true. What he did before Tank and what he did after Tank. Come on, man. Like yeah, come on, dog. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like this, like this, what we doing? And it's like, it's like. <laughs> it's, bro, it, bro, it's like it's like you catch a woman cheating in the bed, and then she tells you, "Baby, you ain't see what you saw." Baby, I did see what I saw. I saw you in the bed with the plumber. Baby, that ain't what you saw. Baby, you saw me. You saw me in the bed minding my own business, and the plumber was telling me that he fixed the he, that he fixed the um the pipes in the bathroom. Baby, that ain't what I saw. I saw you in the bed, bucket naked, with third leg Tyrone, the plumber. Baby, you did not see me in the bedroom, bucket naked, with third leg Tyrone. What you saw me is, I was bucket naked, I was under the cover, third leg Tyrone was telling me that he fixed the pipes in the bathroom. He the plumber, I called the plumber to fix the pipes. True, true, true. And they repeated so many times that, okay, you know what? What you saw? Yeah, man, I saw um, I saw third leg Tyrone. He he fixed the pipes in the bathroom. <laughs> you, know, you get what I'm saying? They think if you if you repeat the lie so many times, and I and I told you guys this here. What what did I tell you guys? What did I tell you guys? I told you guys this here. This what it is. This what it is. Hold on, I'm finna I'm finna show y'all right now. I'm finna show y'all right now. This what it is. See, this is what people, this is what people, uh, uh, to my right, this is what people want to see. You have unpleasant truths and you have comforting lies. As I would say, the well-dressed up lie. You see this long line of people over here, they like the comforting lies. They don't want the truth at all. They want the comforting lies. And I get it. I get it. And they need something to substantiate their confirmation bias. They need something to substantiate, to confirm what they already want to believe. And I, and I tell, and I, listen, I, and listen, this is why I tell y'all, dog, y'all can't be arguing with these niggas on social media, bro. Like, uh, and that's why I played you this shit with, uh, with Slim Thug earlier. A lot of these motherfuckers, man, like, they, they are emotionally, uh, bitchified they like emotionally bitchified like when you have when you have dudes yelling screaming 10 11 hour lives and this and that and you know uh, it, it, it's crazy it's it's like it's, it's really really crazy. I sit back and look at this shit i'm like damn like are you serious dude you literally uh call hold on my nigga you literally live with your mother literally uh, all the fanagers, all the promoters, nigga, 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 you working at McDonald's right now, Amazon or whatever, all the fanagers and promoters, the fanagers and promoting, you get what I'm saying? You, you don't even know how to, uh, uh, like I told you, these niggas got a net worth of two figures, a two figure nigga trying to tell a, a seven to eight figure nigga what he should do or shouldn't do. Like literally, you can't make this shit up and they would sit there and argue it vehemently, passionately, and it was so much, yeah, nigga, yeah, set it, set it, set it, You know, you know, you do know your girl walking out the door with third leg time wrong. Yeah, nigga, fuck my girl. Yeah, matter of fact, yeah, you know, she says she's leaving. Yeah, y'all don't care about that. Yeah, nigga, sign the contract. Sign the 47, 30, 80, 20. Check what I would give you. You better not come to the fight. You a cool. I got shooters. Drop the addy. Like, oh, I'm like, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, nigga, whatever. Um, call him, what's your name when you call from? Man, you already know. It's inevitable. It's D-Block, D-Town, D-City, D-Ville, Baltimore. Facts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like Hell that. Yeah. Facts. 
facts. You already know. You are facts. You already know, Coach. You know, I want to say something, Coach. I appreciate you, my brother, for coming back to the show. It's, uh, I know you were doing your own spots, but I was scared that Ellaby was going to be flying that airplane going to take your ass to the islands, man. I was scared, Coach. I was scared. He's going to take you. All that shit you be talking about. Man, me and PBC are going to land your ass up. I'm going to whoop your ass. Coach, I'm glad you're alive. And you still here. And my brother, I can't wait for Saturdays to get hot. Coach, I'm telling you, we appreciate you, my brother. You are the most appreciated person in this world. We appreciate you, Coach. That's all I got to say. What you got to say with that? Well, you know, I don't know. I, 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 no, no, D-Block, you can't appreciate me. I can't be the most appreciated person in the world. Uh, we have to save that for our Heyman. We got to save that for our oh. now. We can't be, you can't oh. be thanking me now. If it's anything that you yeah. do um, appreciate about me, give that credit to. Well, yeah. you know, I guess I got to be like everybody else and Thank Al Heyman. You got to thank Al and appreciate Al, you know, more. Al is the reason why you have that iPhone, brother. Al is the reason why Coach. that you have a job. Al is the reason why yeah. that you yeah. have clothes on your back. Al is the reason yeah. why yeah. that you have, you know, you know, beautiful women in your life and stuff like that. Thank yes, Al Heyman, brother. Thank Al. Yeah, and I want to thank Al Heyman for the Canelo draws. I couldn't <laughs> do it better than that. Uh, I want to tell him, you know, thank you so much for May Cinco de Mayo. We can't believe it. It's going to be blazing. We're going to believe it. <laughs> We're going to see it. And I, I promise you, Coach, it's going to be an amazing, great fight. Two Mexican warriors going at it. Two Mexican studs. The real legitimate jalapenos. <laughs> Coach, I got to say this one thing. I hate to say this, but it, it has to be mentioned, Coach. What's that? And I'm going to let it go like this. Do you know the rumors are true? That Tank Davis is fighting Martin here in Houston, Texas, my brother. Houston, Texas. That's good. Houston, we got problems. I'm telling you, D Block gonna roll down to Houston. He's gonna meet over Rick Tim. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm going down. And, and, and the two oh, most you're going hated to Houston? people I hate in the world. <laughs> the two most hated people I hate in this world is Tank Wahid Davis and David Benavides. But not just that. Cherry on top. We got Rick Tim. We got Rick Tim's alley up there. Well, what does he live at? He lives at a sunny side. Sunny side, like Toy Story, sunny side. Coach, I'm going to end it like this. Y'all be ready, because D Block's coming, and he ain't coming along. D Block, D Town, D C, D Bill, Baltimore. Thanks. Stand up. Thanks. Shout out to D Block, man. Shout out to D Block. Hey, you know what? I ain't, I ain't gonna even front. I do, I do like what D Block say. Thanks. Hey, like, bro, I'm telling you, everybody I know who listen, like people I know who listen to this show. I was at the barbershop, and the dude was like, "Man, who that dude be calling your show?" He, he say, he say, he say, he say, D Block, D Town, D. He, he like, he was getting it wrong, but he said D got D Block, D Town, and then he said D this, D that, D. This, and I bust out laughing. I said, "Nah, man, that's D Block." <laughs> Hey, he said, my whole boy was like, oh, he said, man, that dude funny. He said, you know, you know, uh, 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 hey, who that is that call the show? Yeah, that D block, D town, D city, D Ville, Baltimore, stand up. Thanks. He wore Canelo draws and he got Tank Davis name tattooed on his hand. True, true, true. That's hey, hey, that, hey, that's a hell of a combination there. Canelo draws and Tank Davis name tattooed on his hand. Um. I was going to buy the fight. I told you guys I was going to buy that fight anyway. Tank, Tank and Frank Martin, I think that's a good fight. This was before I even knew who was going to be on the undercard. I did see an interview with David Benavidez. He said that he's going to be on that undercard. Um, so David's wanting to be on the undercard to fight whoever it is. Um, I think he's fighting at light heavyweight. So um, David Benavidez fighting on a Tank David's undercard, uh, which is, you know, he, I mean, he might as well. He might as well. Um, I think that's that's going to make David Benavidez fighting is going to make that card even stronger. The opponent that he's fighting has to be the one to bring the heat, though. He has to be the one to bring the heat. We'll see how that works out. And um, I want, I'm interested to see what David Benavidez is going to do at light heavyweight. You know, because if he, if he, he moved up, as you guys know, and I think he's fighting uh, Vogic, uh, Vogic um, <clears throat> at light heavy. So we'll see. We'll see. I have my reservations about whether he is going to fight the winner of Baturbiev and Baval because his manager is, is uh, Scampson. His manager is Scampson Lewis. Scampson, so um, that motherfucker lies so much. I, I seriously doubt that he will allow David Benavidez to fight anything that's remotely not PBC. And not only that, 
you know, fucking with Baterbiev or Baval is a whole nother ball game. Especially Baterbiev. Especially Baterbiev. You get what I'm saying? Um, so, uh, I'm, but I'm about to fight, man. I think, I think Tank Davis and Frank Martin, I think that's a good fight. I think that's a good fight. Um, I got Tank, of course. I'm not betting against Tank, you know, against uh, Frank Martin. But I got Tank, of course. Um, if they fight me in Houston, I think, I think that's a good thing, man. Um, you know, Tank do good numbers from a gate standpoint. Um, Houston would appreciate it. You know, just to see Tank fight Frank Martin, have been a bit as on the undercard. Um, if, 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 if this fight card is an indication, uh, the fight card that we just had this past weekend, the fight card that PBC put together, that was a really good card. It wasn't a pay-per-view fight. That's why I didn't buy it, but it was a really good card. I can't even front. I heard one guy was like, man, that, the fight card was trash. And, 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 and it's subjective to the individual. But no, that was, that was a really, really good fight card. Tom Brown did a good job. He put that fight card, he put that fight together. Um, that entire card, that was a pretty good card, in my opinion. In my opinion. It just shouldn't have been, it just shouldn't have been, um, it just shouldn't have been pay-per-view. Should have been pay-per-view, in my opinion. You get what I mean? So, uh, shout out, hey, what you say, in my opinion, he said he's going to fight the Canelo fighter. Yeah, he's fighting, yeah, he's fighting, yeah, as a matter of fact, that, that, isn't that crazy? He's fighting the Canelo fighter. So, I want to see, after, shout out to Mrs. Parker, shout out to Nate, shout out to Elena, La Jessica, School of X-Men, Pauline, No Cap Entertainment, in my opinion, G5, uh, Lydell, what's going on, fam? Um, shout out to our uh, set to Wombo. Salute to you, fam. Uh, what'd you say? It was a decent fire stick. <laughs> shout out to TCS with ATL, Kendall Price. Um, but you know what? Shout out to Yamas from Brooklyn, man. Brooklyn, stand up. Uh, but, you know, I, I want to, I want to, you know, tank fighting the slick black fighter. So that check that box, the slick black, black fighter category. Uh, have it in Texas, set Houston. I ain't gonna lie, man. I think I think that's gonna be. I tell you what, they're gonna sell. They're gonna sell more than Jamal Jamal Chalo. I remember Jamal Chalo fought in Texas. Like, bro, when you can't, when well, listen, when you can't sell out in your own hometown. I remember him and uh, I remember Jamal Chalo. He who he fought? He fought uh, that was was that one motel? That was one. <laughs> That was Wall Motel. I think I, I want to say that was Wall Motel. And right after the fight, this is what he said. I'm sorry. 160 is my weight division. I want to unify. I want to get Golovkin in the ring. I want to bring him to Houston. You know what I'm saying? I want to get Canelo out here to Houston. If they really to come down to 160, this is my weight division. Hey, <laughs> hey this is the greatest part about it. Canelo was at 160 at the time he said it, right? But this is the thing, right? Bro, like, uh, uh, you know, I want to unify. I want <laughs> okay. Hey, Superman say he's still at Unified. Hey, Superman, this man been in the middleweight division since 1972. Man ain't unified the division. Yeah. Hey, listen, haven't had a unification match at all. Haven't had a you hey, he haven't had a unification match at all. I'm one of the baddest motherfuckers of all time. For real though. They said it's not a game of you niggas money. Wait a minute, man, 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 man. Hey, get a nigga, hey, get a nigga, hey, get a nigga some money. They say I hit him and made him rich. I hit him and made him rich. <laughs> but you could call me the can man, cause anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans, Mexicans. Anybody can get it. Bro, I'm just saying, baby. You fuck, 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 fuck around. Yo, yo couch, nigga, fuck yo couch. Man, bro, bro, this man, this man, this man ain't had a unification. This man ain't had a new unification match at all. I'm like, damn, dog. Like, you know. And then nigga get to hold on to the belt. This is why. This is why I ain't. This is why I don't trip. People, people be complaining about uh, Canelo. Fatality. I'm like, damn. Canelo no had 65 fights though, dog. And he don't. He got some hell of a names on his resume. You might can question when he fought him, but bro, like the dudes y'all talking about ain't doing nothing. Uh, you know, you know, you can say Canelo, Duck, and David Benavidez, and, that, and that's some truth to that. He don't want to fight him for whatever the reason may be. But I'm like, man, these other dudes ain't, bro. Like I, I just, I just, I just, I just, I just don't get it, man. Like it, it, it does appear, and I do. Well, you know, what? I do get it. I understand. It, it's a double standard. I do get the double standard, but I, I still like to say this. It's a double standard. I still like to say this. Someone like a Jamal Tarlo, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say about that guy, man. Like, he's exercising his privileges, so to speak. I told you guys that these promotional companies or advisory companies, 
control the sanction of bodies. All the promotion of companies pretty much control them. Sanction the bodies are pretty much, you know, they, you know, we'll take, you know, they're for hire. Like, I can take anybody in the chat. I can take anybody in the chat and get y'all put in the top 10 right now. I can take, listen, I can take Miss Parker. I can take Martin King Boxing. I can take Nay Teela, No Cap Entertainment. I can take uh, JC. I can take any one of y'all right now with a zero and zero professional record. And, 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 and let me go holler at the WBC. I'll go holler at the WBC. I give them a brown envelope or a briefcase. I give them a briefcase. You know what I mean? Next thing you know, um, wait a minute, uh, uh, wait a minute now, 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 hold on. How, how poor Chuck Willie, how poor Chuck Willie got in the top 10? He ain't fought nobody. He had all hood fights. Well, you know, it's to the discretion of the WBC, you know, poor Chop Willie, you know, he, um, he's a tough competitor and, you know, we, we took in consideration some of the tough fights that he's had. We saw him fight Chico Stick, who's a Mexican, by the way. We saw the fight between him and Chico Stick. That was a good enough fight to put him in the top 10. Also, he, Shorty Big Nuts, you know, Shorty Big Nuts was 23 in the hood at the time. So, you know, that's his only loss to Shorty Big Nuts, you know, and we did decided, you know, we talked to the committee and the committee voted that, you know, um, um, pork chop, pork chop, Willie, you mean, you mean pork chop, we don't say pork, you pork chop, I mean, yes, yes, pork chop, you know, he deserved to be in the top 10, you get what I'm saying, it is what it is. Ran off on the floor twice. I'm like, man, come on, man, bro, bro, I'm like, come on, man. I say what I say and I deliver it. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Bro, like, you can't, you can't make, you can't make this shit up. True, true, true. Man, dog on Mauricio, man, listen. Dude, listen. Then you got somebody like dog on, what's on, Carlos Adamas. Carlos Adamas. Carlos Adamas can't get a, he, listen, he can't get a title shot to save his life. Carlos Adamas can't get a title shot to save his life. The man been the intern champion, champion for 75 years. Just an intern. The man want to get a shot at the title. He can't get a shot to save his life. Now I am the number one contender. I'm tired of James the Poodle, Grim Reaper, whatever he want to call himself, ducking me. All right, I'm tired of man driving around town in eight Rolls Royces. He ain't fought nobody. I'm still in a bro hand. Bro, you can't make this up. You know, <laughs> you know, same side of the street. Same side of the street. Both of them, both of them with the PBC. He's he still he still can't he still can't get a fight. He still can't get a fight. You get what I'm saying? Uh, Jamie said, "Coach, you need to yell an envelope uh, to tank uh, to uh, oh to rank for your fighter." Bro, bro, that's that's how fighters get ranked. Like that's how fighters get ranked. They get uh, uh, rank sanctioned about to receive money from uh, from promoters and managers. That's how they get ranked. Like damn dead ass serious. They're not gonna come out and say that, but that's how they get ranked. There's no honesty. There, there's no honesty in, 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 in this shit. You know what I mean? You know, there's no honesty in this here. Like, listen, hold on, dog. I got a couple of dollars. I'm going to shoot you. I'm trying to get Pork Chop Will in the top 10 right now. Can we get Pork Chop in the top 10? Well, Pork Chop is, he has an O and O record. Oh, don't worry about that, baby. You know, you, you, you can find a way. Use some of that, use some of that fancy language that you normally use. That fancy language that you normally use, Mauricio. Use some of that fancy language in order to get, in order to get, uh, get Pork Chop right, right in the top 10. You know, um, well, you know, that, that would be unethical for me to do that. You know, I would never do anything like that. You know, um, hey man, I got a briefcase over there with, uh, with, uh, with a hundred thousand dollars. I would never do anything like that, but you know, um, um, let's just say you, what you said, you said a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. A hundred thousand dollars, boy. But I, I pay you that. You're going to be owing me favors for life. Yeah. You know what? Well, I tell you what, you know, um, let me talk it over to the committee. Now, Mauricio Suleiman, the committee, the, this is the board, Mauricio Suleiman, Mauricio Suleiman, brother, Mauricio Suleiman, auntie, Mauricio Suleiman, uncle, Mauricio Suleiman, dog. I heard he got a couple of dogs. Um, Mauricio Suleiman, niece. Mauricio Suleiman nephew, Mauricio Suleiman cousins, Mauricio Suleiman baby mama, Mauricio Suleiman wife. Yeah, we had, well, I talked it over to the committee. We made a vote. <laughs> true, true, <laughs> true. Hey, listen, after my God, after my God, I respected you. After my God. After my God, I respected you. I respected you. After my God. After my God, give him my God. You second the God, champ. No, no, no. I didn't disagree. I didn't disagree. I respect him. I'm sorry. I respect him. Come on for the nigga pass out. Take the picture before you pass out. Yeah, get him before you pass out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want. Y
Yo, he, he needs air. He needs air. Take the picture. Take, take the picture before you face the picture. That's my hero, right? That's my hero. One more, one more. It takes a man to take a lot to do it. Yeah. All right, what? Hey, hey, you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Outside of him falling down on his knees, looking like he want to give Floyd some awesome Johnson, you know the thing that pissed me off the most about that video? Why was he holding that little ass chain? Did you notice he grabbed his chain? Up to my God, up to my God, I respect each other. And then when Floyd grabbed him, you know, Floyd grabbed him and they picked him up, the nigga was crying, he had tears in his eyes, he was like, you know, he frowned up crying. He got weak at the knees. And then after, after he found the strength to stand up, you know, Floyd grabbed him with his left arm, squeezed him on the shoulder, and he grabbed this. He had this little ass. Bro, check this out. Man had this, the man had this little ass chain around his neck. Man had the little ass chain around his neck. Like, the, 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 the chain, listen, the chain is about the size of these headphones. He grabbed the chain like this, you know, that's, that's my hero, right? That's my hero. <laughs> Bro, bro, man, you, man, you, man, if you don't tuck that chain in, Floyd, Floyd got all these diamonds and stuff around his neck on his chains, right? You know, uh, you know, diamonds on his bracelets and watch, bro. You got up there with that ten karat gold chain around your neck. You grabbed the chain like you was holding some ice. Like he grabbed the chain, like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my that that that's my hero, right? And I'm like, bro, you can't make this up. True, true, true. He grabbed the chain, man. You know, it's embarrassing. It's, listen, it's embarrassing enough. Hey, 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 shout, hey, hey, um, hey, shout out to uh, shout out to me, uh, Miss Parker. Listen, Miss Parker, it's it's embarrassing enough that he on his knees in front of all these women. In front of all these women. And Floyd blushing. Floyd sitting there blushing. He like, oh my God. Oh. Floyd blushing like, oh my God. This is oh I got we got hey, we gotta take this guy everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, for what? Why? You know what I mean? You know, you, hey, just, hey, just imagine. Hey, y'all remember what we did last week, right? Just imagine. Just, hey, hey, just imagine. He he in Vegas with Floyd. He grabbed, you know, up to my God, up to my God, I respected y'all. He, he in the bed, he, he in there, he in there with Floyd. And you know, we got a whole lot of Diddy stuff, a whole lot of Diddy stuff going on, a whole lot of Diddy stuff going on, right? And Floyd put him on the money team. And he's on his knees. His, his daily ritual is, um, 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 like I said before, listen, listen, what is your name again? What is your name again? Um, 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 Abdullah, Abdullah, listen, Abdullah, Abdullah, listen, um, uh, um, what is your name? Um, 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 like I said before, um, I, I, I like what you're doing. You, you do good work. You do good work. Um, you know, I'm very proud of you. You know, uh, you are a champion in that heart. You know, it, it takes a lot to do what you did to recognize my greatness. I tell you what, I'm going to hire you. You're going to be a part of the, the money team. You're going to be my personal do boy. You know what I mean? And then he break down and start crying, and he fall down on his knees in front of Floyd. Floyd just standing there looking down, and, and, and he's on his knees. His head, his head is waist high with Floyd. And Booger Ray Leonard kicked the door in. Hey, wait a minute, buddy. What are you doing? Get off of your knees. That's my job. True, true, <laughs> true. Floyd, what are you doing, Floyd? Floyd, why is he on his knees? Leonard, Leonard, no, Leonard, you wasn't here, you wasn't here. Floyd, but you know I'm just a phone call away. Something told me, something told me something fishy. You know, I had a feeling something fishy was going on over here, buddy. Hey, you get off of your knees. Get off your knees right now. You know what I mean? You know why? why you know, um, you know, uh, Floyd, Floyd, tell him, tell him, Floyd, tell him, tell him, tell him that I'm a part of the money team now, Floyd. Please, after my God, after my God, I respected you, Floyd. Tell him I'm part of the money team. I don't care, buddy. I've been with him from day one, Floyd, <laughs> Floyd, Floyd. Oh my gosh, Floyd, 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 are you replacing me, Floyd? Leonard, Leonard, I retired, I retired. Um, I don't need you anymore over here. I mean, you, you're still the CEO of Mayweather Promotions, but you know, but Floyd, why are you, why are you allowed to take my job, Floyd? I mean, I still have my knee pads and my KY jelly and, and, and cocoa butter. I still have that, Floyd. Uh, Leonard, Leonard, don't worry about it. I gave, I gave it to him. I gave, I gave it to Abdullah. Abdullah has it. You know, Abdullah, tell, tell, tell him, tell, tell him, you know, up to my God, I respect it, you Up to my God. He said that I'm second to, he's, I'm second to God. I'm second to God. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, I, 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 I am kind of upset that 
he didn't put me above God, but, you know, I, I will give him a chance. He didn't put me above God, but he did say that I'm second to God. And you never said that, you never said that, um, from, um, um, Leonard. Yeah, but Floyd, but what about the massages, Floyd? What about the, 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 the blood, sweat, and tears? And what about me carrying the spit bucket, Floyd? And what about all of those other things? You just can't, you just can't forget about the things that I've done for you over the years. I'm like, bro, if you don't tuck that chain, dog, if you grab that chain one more time, I know something. Not one more time. If you grab that chain one more time, I know something. I know something. If you grab that chain one more time and you don't wipe them tears out your eyes, you got calluses on your knees. You be on your knees so much that you have calluses on your knees. True, true, true. And guess what? This is this is what we have going on on social media right now. This is what we have going on. Like literally, you can't make this up. Um, but anyways, back to back to the Tank Davis and Frank Martin. I, I, I like I like that fight. I'm gonna buy that fight, and especially if David Benavidez is gonna be on the undercard. You know, I'm anxious to see what David is going to do. David, David fighting on the undercard. Um, I think David probably should stay at light heavy since he, you know, you know, since Canelo don't want to fight him. So he ain't gonna get that Canelo fight. So let him stay, let him stay at light heavy and fight with Baturbia. Fight Baturbia with Baval. Play, fight with them. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> y'all know me, boy. Y'all know me. I love that wrestling. That got their wrestling. That got their material, bro. Well, I ain't, you know, listen. Really, 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 I'm scared of them. Really, I'm kind of more scared of them than anything. That dude, material, look like a monster. That dude hit with mean intentions. Left hand, right hand. It don't matter. He had pretty good footwork. Um, he could take a good punch. But, man, that shit, that going to be problems, bro. All right, man. Them dudes ain't, man. Hey, what to say? G5 says it's not a doula fault. He was conceived that freak knee. Man, hey, hey, Jamie say, he said, but turn me out on, man, let me tell you something, man. Hey, bro. <laughs> bro, let me tell you something. Man, I'm on uh, material, bro. I, again, you say he's getting older, so he needs he needs these fights now. Yeah, but Baturbiev is fighting, though. He's active. He's not sitting around waiting. He's He's been fighting, so, and he's fighting the tough fights. Shout out to Blue Hustleman. Uh, Hustleman, salute to you, fam. Listen, shout out to Rick Till. Rick, what's going on, baby boy? What's going on, fam? Um, hey, Rick. Rick, what's up, man? Southside. Rick, Rick, you wasn't here, Rick. I got something to tell you. I got some, I got some breaking news. As a matter of fact, hold on. Hold on, Rick. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, Rick. I got something for you. Got something for you. Hold on. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's up, coaches? D-Block two times. D-Block two times. Thanks. Talk to me. Hey, coach, now we know that Tank Davis, Waheed Davis, Bob O'Hare, Baltimore's finest, the, you know, the chance that they got. They know who they got, coach. He's a WBA email champ, or, or like they call it, super champ. Uh, coach, we know David Benavides, the Ecuadorian Guacamolean, Arizona son that we know, they don't know where he's from. Both of them will be on that car tonight, coach. I mean that night, coach. That night, yeah. I think it's gonna do yeah. yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be good fight. I think Frank Martin would do a Buster Douglas. He's gonna <laughs> knock out uh, Tank Davis. You heard it here first. <laughs> Plenty of times you've heard that first. And I come in with ah! I'm telling you, the ghost is gonna reappear and he's gonna show Tank Davis this is why you don't fight brothers. Cause you can't mess with the real brother like Martin. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, coach. It's coming. It's coming. Buster Douglas. The ghost of Buster Douglas is coming, and he's going to knock out Mr. Joaquin Davis. And for our Ecuadorian guacamole brother, of course, we know that he's fighting up another weight class. Mm. And I'm telling you right now, the who, reaction who, who is right. Who fighting another weight class? Uh, you know, David, the Ecuadorian oh, yeah, 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 yeah. fighting. Light heavyweight, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's going up to 175, coach. He's fighting, uh, uh, I could say, a semi-retired fighter. But I think that semi-retired fighter is going to show David Benavides. Now I know why your ass never wanted to come up here, and now you're here, and I'm going to test your body, and I'm going to knock you out. 
I'm telling you right no now, diddy. coach. No diddy. Those two you, of you said you said uh, you, no said, diddy. you said I'm gonna test your body. No diddy. Got to say no diddy oh. now. Oh, okay. My bad, coach. Uh, no diddy. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm telling you the truth, coach. You gotta believe me. Just like I told you, Fandora. Just like I told you, Cruz. Coach, we seen it right now. Be make it. Be what, what is wild to say, coach? What is wild to say? Hey, listen. This this is what I want to ask you. You said that you go were going. You know what? I'm not, I'm not going. You know what? I think I'm gonna go to that fight. It's in June. I think I. Listen, what I gotta do? I'm going. I know I'm going to Vietcom. I'm gonna be in Dallas. Yeah, probably. I, I gotta, I'm gonna be in Dallas to see my daughter. My daughter. You know, I told you I have a daughter that lives in Dallas. I gotta come to Dallas to see yeah, my daughter. Yeah. I gotta be in Dallas. Um, but you said that fight is. As a matter of fact, I, I think I'm gonna do that. Go see my daughter, then go go to the fight. Cause I want. You know, I never been to a Tank Davis fight, so. You know, uh, that's on my bucket list. I probably, you know, want to go to Houston. But you said you're going to be in Houston. So now. I am. Okay. So <laughs> you're going to be in Houston. <laughs> Hell yeah. Shit, I ain't scared of nobody. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, no, no. I mean, ain't, ain't that going to happen to you. You'll be good. Uh, but, um, yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I want to, but what you said on the call earlier, you said that you're going to be in Houston and you mentioned Rick Tim's name. What, what you got to say about Rick? Man, you already know about Rick, man. You know, he never wanted to sign the contract. I told him, I don't give a fuck. I'm down for whatever, man. Uh, Diddy, I'm telling you right now, coach. I told him, 80-20 contract, sign the contract. You already know what's up. I get the revenue of the pay-per-view event. We make it happen. Coach, we got to make it happen. It's a great fight for the, whole, for the whole company, coach. And when I say the company, I mean the community. I'm yeah. telling you, my people, Next you have to demand this fight. Me, yes, me, Rick Kim, in the ring, $10 a pop. I'm telling you, Coach, it's going to be great. And, Coach, if you're going to Houston, believe me, I will wear my vest yeah. and I will have my security. My Oak Cliff people, we coming down, baby, and we're going to make each other proud. <laughs> D-Block, 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 Man, you ain't gonna need all that, man. <laughs> you ain't gonna have his best. Man, you ain't gonna need all that, man. <laughs> hey, you know what, man? Hey, hey, Rick. <laughs> man, you ain't gonna need all that, bro. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna be fucking with you and use it like that. I don't do, I don't do that thing about you like that. Uh, uh, uh deep block. You ain't got to worry about all that. You, uh, <laughs> hey, matter of fact. Rick, Rick Tim's, Rick, Rick is a solid dude. Rick, 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 my, Rick the type of dude like this here. This is the type of dude Rick probably is. Now, I, now I never met Rick, but I'm, I'm planning on meeting him when I go to Houston. Rick probably the type of dude like this here. Look here, man. We gonna make sure ain't nothing gonna happen to you. I'm gonna make sure you straight, but you gonna remedy that fade. You gonna remedy that fade. This is what it's gonna be. Ain't nobody gonna, well, ain't nobody gonna mess. You ain't, you ain't gotta worry about nothing. You know what it be? <laughs> I just, you Rick go, Rick go make sure don't nobody do that to you. You know, just, just so he can. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, you know what, though? All jokes aside, I, listen, I had a homeboy, right? I had a homeboy. My homeboy had a fight with this dude. He had a fight with this dude, and uh, he got jumped. Now, he ended up going to the dude's neighborhood. The fight. I was with him. It was like. It was like. Uh, call, call, hold on. It was like. It was probably like 15, 20 dudes out there. Uh, one of the dudes that was out there was like, look. This going to be one on one. Let these niggas go ahead and fight. Don't nobody do nothing. Regardless of who won. Regardless of who win. Let them bump. Now my homeboy ended up winning. He ended up winning because he got jumped and shit last time. He ended up winning. And when the fight was over with, they, 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 I mean, they let us leave. Now, they didn't have no issues with me, but my homeboy, he wanted, he, wanted, he wanted to run his fade. Now, this back in the day when you can go to other people, you know, if you can go to other people's neighborhoods, get a one-on-one, -on -one, get a one-on-one, -on -one, and that's that. You know, uh, I don't think they're doing that today. I think these kids, they, they shooting now. They were shooting then, but back then, back in the day, you could get a one-on-one. -on -one. You can go to somebody's neighborhood and, you know, you know, I mean, you get what I'm saying? Now you gotta, you gotta, you gotta listen. You gotta, you you gotta work that out. Now. <laughs> you gotta work that out because it might be some things get on your head. But you, you, but you get what I'm saying? You gotta work that out. Hey, look here, man. I just want a fair one. Can I get a fair one? You know what I mean? So, um, Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? 
Hello, my name is uh, Goza. Goja, talk to me. Um, so, <clears throat> I know I'm getting off topic here. Uh, I'm from Seattle. Seattle. Uh, so I'm the guy who also uh, who met David Benavides at my restaurant mm -hmm. uh, a few times. And last night, it looks like he was in a podcast. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's called Fresh and Fit. Yeah, I heard of it. Um, I was wondering, if, do you think it's a possibility maybe you would like to do a, uh, a podcast with them? Well, who, Fresh and Fit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I feel like a lot of your values. Yeah, fresh, yeah, fresh and oh, fit. Sorry. Yeah, fresh and fit. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with, I'm familiar with them. I don't, I don't know anybody over there though. But yeah. Yeah, there, there you are in uh, Miami, Florida, and a lot of the they, they, they talk about the things what they talk about, like making um more of a like a better version for men out there for the podcast, and a lot of the values that they talk about is very similar to yours. And those are the two podcasts I mostly listen to, yours and theirs, and a lot of times they're very similar and. I was very surprised that David Benavidez was was there I guess, yesterday, and I was like shocked. Well, was David, like, David Benavidez is training. He's living in Miami now. He he um he's been training in Miami, so that's why he's there. You know, that's why yet. Yeah, that, that's what I heard uh, when I was watching, listening to it uh, yesterday, and I was like, oh man, that'd be really cool. It's, it's me. Perhaps if you would uh, give him a reach out, or I'll, I'll let them know as well. That'd be really cool if you guys uh, collide and talk about you know a little bit of boxing, but also. It's about stuff. how, um, because you talk a lot about how, how men are like this generation is becoming a little different than it was. Before, yeah, fresh and, yeah, fresh and, and fit is huge. They, they're huge. They talk, they, they kind of like in the manosphere space. I think they're in the manosphere. Um, it, it's funny that you say that because I'm, I'm doing interviews with different, different podcasts. Um, that's what I'm gonna be doing now, just um, not in boxing though. I'm, I'm gonna be doing something with them boys out in Texas. Uh, Boss Talk Radio, Boss Talk Radio. I'm gonna be doing some stuff with Boss Talk. Um, interviews, you know, uh, my manager know those guys very well. Um, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to have Bubba Dub, a comedian coming on this show. I'm going to be interviewing him because there's a, there's a comedy event coming up in Meridian, Mississippi. Uh, comedian uh, Scrancho. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's a lot of stuff that I'm going to be doing just outside of Boston and they're coming over on this show. So yeah, I would love to, I would love to do something with them. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, like I said, uh, I watch both of you guys' podcasts. Or you guys are doing amazing stuff, and uh, just say, hey. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know those guys though. Like you're fresh and fit, I don't, I don't know those guys. So I don't, you know, um, I'm familiar with who they are. I know they're big. They're big in the manosphere space. Um, I saw a couple mm -hmm. of their episodes. I don't agree with everything they say, um, but you know, I mean, I mean, I, res I respect, I respect them. I respect their hustle. Um, they big. I know. I think. I know, if, if this is the same people that um that I'm thinking of, they I think they're big. They got like a million subscribers or something of that sort. Are they, are these are the guys you're talking about. Yeah, they're they're pretty big. And yeah, yeah big. I, I agree. I don't agree everything what they say. Honestly, it's like yeah. some of the things are like just literally for show to get more you know viewers. The marketing mm -hmm. style what they do. Yeah. But you kind of have to like people need to be aware like what's what's a good thing insights and what are the things that you don't want to take away. Mm -hmm. And some people are just not into that. And I'm like, that's fine. But again, we're in a reality world where, you know, you just you take what you take, and if you don't want it, you can just move on. You don't need to like harass anybody else with that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, salute, fam. Hey, man. Go, go to from Seattle. Salute to you, fam. All Thank right. you. All right. Yeah, I'm. Uh... Yeah, man. Um. Yeah, man. I'm. I'm. Shit. I'm going. I got a lot of man. I got a lot of part. Y'all don't. I got a lot of podcasts. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, Boss Talk Radio. I think they out of Dallas. Boss Talk Radio. Are they out of Dallas? Or are they out of Houston? I wonder, are they out of Dallas or are they out of Boss Talk? Let me go look up Boss Talk Radio. I, 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 they out of they out of Houston or Dallas? I gotta look them up and see. I gotta look them up and see. Uh, Mario say fresh and fit are clowns. Yeah, I seen I seen a couple of I seen a couple of their of their shows. I seen a couple of their shows so. Uh, what you say, hood sports? You, you say they in Houston? They, you say they in Houston? Let me, uh, outside of Dallas. Yeah, I thought they, I thought they was in Dallas. Cause I watch, I watch all the boss talk stuff. Um, they, 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 uh, they, they, uh, they have some good interviews. They have some good interviews. I watch all the boss talk, boss talk stuff. All the boss talk radio. Um, I seen the one where they had Rainwater on there. When Rainwater was talking about, um, 
uh, uh, Mo3, uh, they had Big Gip on there, uh, Melvin Farmer, uh, Freeway Ricky Ross, them on there. They had, uh, they, they have everybody on their stuff. They have everybody on their stuff, man. They do, they, uh, they, they, uh, they, they do, they do pretty good interviews. They do pretty good interviews. I like them boys. I like them Texas boys there. I like, I like him and, um, him, him and the Jamaican lady. He got on the, got on the team. I like them. Uh, Hurricane say men who hate themselves. Oh, that's what, that's what they all about? I mean, you know, I, shit, I go on this show. Shit, I ain't, you know what I mean? Um, shout out to Damian Ben. He said, Fresh and Fit, definitely be. I mean, I, I, I mean, I go on this show and see what they're talking about. I go on this show and see what they're talking about. You get what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, I, can, I can hold my own with pretty much anybody, to be fair. So, um, shout out to Derek Choice. Hey, okay. Dropping out half a dub on your boy. He said, Happy Easter, everybody. Rolo will be back. Man, Easter gone. Easter, Easter over with. <laughs> so, so, happy Easter. <laughs> hey, Derek. Hey, Derek. Man, Easter, Easter gone, fam. Like, Easter, Easter is over with. A platform stage, people pimping, pimping, sharp as razor blades. Hey, Hurricane, so he said, What you say? You said all they do is complain about women. I mean, you know, you know me, you know me about all that goddamn complaining, man. I ain't, man, I ain't got time for all that complaining shit. Just be, uh, you know, you complain about women all goddamn day. You get what I'm saying? I, ain't, I mean, I'm not, you know, again, I've seen two of their shows, you know, so I, I think they are in the, in the, the manosphere space. Uh, but you know, I used to man, I used to watch like I used to watch Tommy Sotomayor before they ran him off the block. The sisters ran him, uh, got him, got got made YouTube kick him off. Then they kicked off, kicked off Cynthia G. Cynthia G was, you know, she you know she hate black men, so they kicked they they finally kicked her off. And uh, the Tommy Sotomayor, then Kevin Samuels, bro, who low Kevin Samuels make some other goddamn money. Then Kevin Samuels passed away, R.I.P. to him and. You know, I watched Tasha K. I watched those sisters from the divestment, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, divestment movement, the divesters. You know, yeah. Anyways, you know, the, the these niggas from Blackistan. See, these Blackistanis, we need to divest from the black man, y'all. Y'all, you know, you can tell, Pookie, Pookie Ray, like some of the stuff I be saying, Pookie Ray Ray. Then we had these, we had these mammies. They want a cap for these tired ass niggas in Blackistan. <laughs> hey, bro, I be bro. I be sitting back listening, bro, just laughing. I listen to the women from the divestment movement. I used to listen to Kevin Samuels, listen to Thomas Sotomayor, listen to Doggy Diamonds, listen to MREC TV, listen to Doggo uh, Hassan Campbell. Man, I lit, bro, Dr. Umar, Tariq Nasheed. This is how I know, this is how I knew, like, these guys that come over here, that's in, that's in the boxing space, especially on boxing Twitter. I call them Shea Butter Laptop Revolutionaries because they're not putting no work in in the street. They just come online and want to be revolutionaries online, but they're not really putting no work in out there on the street. You get, they ain't doing none of that. They just want to come whine, bitch, moan, and complain all day. I said, these goddamn Shea Butters, man, goddamn. Like, you know, like, they, they, they killing me with this. Like, um, I don't, like me, I, it's hard for me to respect a man who complain, whine, bitch, and moan all day. And I always say this, like, if you believe that you are a king, and all this stuff there, then you need to know what the definition of a king is. Kings are rulers in the land. They dominate their dominion. If you are God, God knows how to create, take something from nothing, take nothing from something, you know, take, make, 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 make something out of nothing. God's our creators. They are, uh, they rule everything in their surroundings. Did you get what I'm saying? God, there's no such thing as a God complaining, making excuses. You God. There's no such thing as a king making excuses. You're a king. Show that you have dominion in the land. Show your kingship. And this dude that be crying, bitching, moaning, complaining all the damn time. Just... Just bro, like I, bro, I just, I, just, bro, I ain't, I ain't gonna, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna say here lie to you, man. I can't, I can't, I can't rock with that. I can't rock with that. I can't rock with that. You get what I'm saying? I can't rock with that. I ain't, you know what I mean? Cause I'm like, bro, I'm the type of dude. I'm the type of dude. I'm the type. Hey, what you say, uh, Rick? You said you was on the panel with Sinetta last night. I got a dialogue back and forth with Doctor Phil. Oh, yeah, Doctor Phil Valentine. Doctor Phil Valentine pseudo though. That's, hey, you know what, Rick? The only thing is, 
a lot of these dudes are pseudo. Like they be, but the stuff they be talking about, a lot of these dudes are pseudo. So, uh, Dr. Phil, I like Dr. Phil Valentine. Um, but they be pseudo as hell. They be they be talking about some, they be talking about some crazy. They be talking about some crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, bro, they be talking about some. Oh, oh my God, you get what I'm saying? But uh, but yeah, I man, I, I I watch some. I watch some. Everybody, man. Um, uh, when I can, I see all the Country Wayne skits. I've been following Country Wayne since 2014. He was on YouTube. Uh, when, it, when he was on on Facebook, I follow all Country Wayne skits. Desi Banks, bro. Like I watch. I like to be honest with you. I watch more other stuff than I do boxing now. I used to watch quite a few of the boxing podcasts. I really don't watch a lot of boxing boxing podcasts anymore. Um, I watch a lot of the other stuff. I've always watched the other stuff, to be fair. But I watch a lot of I watch a lot of the other stuff now. Um, I still watch I watch I watch I watch, I watch some boxing boxing podcasts, but the other stuff just the other stuff just funny. Uh, you know. Uh, Tony the Closer, I'll be checking him out. I've been watching him for years. Um, just all of those guys, just a lot of the stuff. I'm starting to get up on a lot of the hip hop, the hip hop podcast now. Like, um, so I'm up on a lot of the hip hop podcasts. I ain't talking about Vlad TV. That's old Vlad TV. That's old police ass. Vlad TV. That's old police ass podcast. I ain't watching that shit. I mean, I watch it every now and then, but I watch a lot of the hip hop podcasts now. Um, uh, you get what I'm saying? I watch um uh, I watch um uh, Shady Shark Skip 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 Skip. No man, I'm just, hey, hey, listen, I, I watch I watch Shady Shark. Um, uh, you know I watch a lot of that. I watch a lot of that. You get what I'm saying? So shout out to uh shout out to Jason Follow on Christ. Yeah, pocket watching with JT. Yeah, I watch pocket watching with JT. Um, I watch him. I watch uh. The lead attorney. I watch the lead attorney. I watch uh Pocket Watch with JT, the lead attorney. Uh just just I watch I watch I watch a lot of that, bro. I watch a lot of I watch a lot of Yeah, Club Shay Shay. <laughs> I watch Coach Coach Greg Adams. Uh I watch um what's my main man name? The Angry Man. I watch him. Bro, listen, I'm I, I watch the, the women from bro, the women from the divestment movement are some of the funniest people that you ever want to listen to bro the women from the divestment movement bro them women bro, them black women don't play yeah i don't know why y'all be hanging and listening to the dog go then here come these mammies these black female mammies they still messing with these broke ass niggas from black and stand bro. <laughs> I said, oh my god yo Corey Holcomb 5150 yeah listen bro y'all the, the women from the divestment movement Oh, bro, them sisters are hilarious, bro. Them sisters, I watch Tasha K. Them sisters don't play. They listen. They call like like I call the dudes Wakanda niggas. They say Blackistan. I call them Shea Butter Lot Type Revolutionaries. They say black. <laughs> yeah, these niggas from Blackistan and these mammies, They always came in. Now look what he did to her and all that stuff there. He he unalived her right there. And then these mammies coming out here and they they hate the men from the conscious community. The conscious community, they ain't nothing but some perverts. They 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 be messing with children and y'all be capping for brother polite and and um. And uh, what the other do, Nature Boy? And there's always some black mammies. They gonna run their ass out there, and they gonna try to take up for them and defend them. And all they do is mess with our young little girls. And y'all, oh, bro, the women from the divestment movement, they do not play. True, true, true. Oh, boy, the women from the divestment movement don't play, bro. Oh, they boy, oh, boy, they savages. Boy, they savages, bro. They are savages. I'm like, man, he said, Coach, Nature Boy just got life with no parole. Bro, I'm like, <laughs> you know, Yvette Cornell, you know, we Adolfs, American descendants of slaves, and then Tariq Nasheed, we FBA, Foundation of Black America. <laughs> see, these are tethers. You see, family, and here go Tariq Nasheed. Tariq Nasheed gonna put that chapstick on. You see, family, see, this is what we have here, family. The tethers, like Candace Owens and um, what's the dude? Uh, 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 what's the dude name? Antoine Daniels. See, the tethers 
are the ones who are committing the crimes in the community. Foundation of Black Americans, we don't really, we don't really commit crimes like that. Like, we don't really like robbing our own people, you know, uh, raping the babies, you know, children and stuff like that. We don't really do stuff like that. See, these are the tethers. They're coming over here and they're getting all of our resources. <laughs> the tethers are the ones who, you know, no, 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 sir, no, sir. What you're going to have to do, now you want to come to the Foundation of Black Americans because you got into something with Zaddy. You got into something with Zaddy. Zaddy beat your ass out they're Rodney King you and now you want to call on the foundation of black Americans to stand together in solidarity with you no 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 you got to hold your own nuts on that you're going to have to hold your own nuts brothers and sisters the tethers are going to have to hold their own nuts because they be calling us akatas and all of that stuff there and we always ride for everybody else it's time for them to start riding for us true true oh true. my god this is um, <laughs> hey, dog, old Tariq, bro. I like, I like Flex, though, man. I've been watching Tariq now she's since the 90s. Flex, he's funny. He's funny. I like him. I like uh, Dr. Umar. Those guys are funny. Now, I don't agree. I don't agree with. There's some things I do agree with, and there's some things I don't. I don't agree with everything they say, but, you know, I, I, me, I've been there, done that. I've been there, done that in the nation. So, it's like, I get it. I understand, you know. The shit, the shit, the shit funny though. The shit funny. The shit funny. The shit ain't like the shit funny. I like, I like Tariq. I like Tariq. I like Dr. Umar. I like them dudes, man. They funny to me. They funny to me. They funny. You know what I mean? So shout out to Steve Nash. He said I met Tariq in Detroit. You met him in Detroit? Okay. School or X man? What's going on, fam? Salute to you, fam. I like, I like him though. I like him. The dude funny. The them, hey, them niggas funny. I ain't gonna, them niggas funny to me, bro. I don't care what nobody say. Them dudes is funny. Hey, we gonna pay some bills and then we gonna wrap the show up. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Thundercats, mole rats, water buffaloes, alligators, and haters. Mark your calendar. It's going all the way down. The place to be, Meridian, Mississippi, Queen City Friday Night Comedy Showcase. Bringing out all the big dogs. Friday, April 26th. Get your laugh on with comedian sensation. Bubba Dub. Special performances by comedian Scruncho. And the messenger, Keith Wallace. We party in at the Temple Theater, Meridian, Mississippi. Doors open at 8 p.m. Tickets available on Eventbrite or call Big G at 808-225-9063. Bubba Dub, Bubba Dub, we'll be on the show. Trash. <laughs> we will have Bubba Dub on the show. We're going to have Bubba Dub on the show. I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to interviewing that brother there. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to interviewing that brother there. Let's give everybody that round of applause, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I get it, man. Shout out to everybody who gave a super chat today. Shout out to Derek Choice. Aye, okay. Shout out to Marty King Boxing. Aye, okay. Shout out to Mr. Lemons. Aye, okay. Salute the Gertz. Aye, okay. Candy Slim. Aye, okay. Stephen X. Aye, okay. Shout out to uh, Drew. Aye, okay. And the one Mr. Ham. Aye, okay. Let's give the super chatters a round of applause. Um, you know, and also, also, man, shout out to our sponsor, man, Queen City, uh, shout out to this Queen City Comedy Showcase. If you are in uh, Mississippi, Meridian, Mississippi, Jackson, the surrounding areas, or even in Alabama, please show up to the Queen City Comedy Showcase. Um, we're going to have some great, a great lineup. Uh, Keith Wallace is going to be there. Uh, 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 who else is going to be there? Uh, Scruncho, the comedian, is going to be there. Scruncho has been in several movies. Um, Bubba Dub is the headliner. It's going to be just an all-comedy affair, so y'all please check that out. Um, Coach, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there as well. Uh, you know, the event was put together by Big G, my manager. So y'all, please, man, check that out. Um, if you're in the area, if you're in the area, you know what I mean. So we will have Bubba Dub on here. I will let you know when and we'll have him on the show. We're gonna get him on the show, and uh, <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that. And um, I'll probably be doing some interviews with Boss Talk Radio as well. Want to get, you know, do something with those guys. I like what they're doing over there in Texas. You know, everybody, you know, I like what they're doing over there in Texas, man. I, I really do. I like those guys a lot. Um, the brother and the sister that's on there. So, you know, uh, Miss Jamaica, I like, I like them a lot. So, you know, we're going to check them out. Uh, shout out to everyone who called the show. Shout out to Sheila and Kelly. Aye, okay. Jamie from New York. Aye, okay. Coach Eddie from the ATL. Aye, okay. Shout out to Ron Frazier. Aye, okay. Shout out to uh, Curtis from Long Beach. Aye, okay. Uh, shout out to Two Rich on um, Sports High. Aye, okay. Sh shout out to Derek from Florida. Aye, okay. Mason from Flint, Michigan. Aye, okay. Demetrius from Murder Beach. Aye, Shout out to D Block from Dallas two times. Aye, okay. And shout out to Goja from Seattle. Aye, okay. Let's get a call us a round of applause. I 
I, I say shit. These, I say these shit brought a lot of revolutionaries. Y'all niggas think y'all niggas think y'all mad at me? Don't mess around and have me bring these sisters over here from the from the from the divestment movement. I bring these sisters over here from the divestment movement. Boy, you really <laughs> yeah, these niggas from Blackistan. Excuse me, are you a dusty? Are you a dusty? Girl, yeah, girl, he a dusty girl. Girl, he is a. I know. Listen, I girl, yeah, yeah, he a dusty. I listen. I saw dust. I, I listen. I see dust coming through the phone. True, true, true. Didn't you say your baby mama bought you that iPhone 15? Guess, child, he's a dusty. You know, yeah. If you don't take your dusty ass back, that black is staying. <laughs> Bro, them listen, bro. Y'all think y'all y'all think I'm something else, man. Them sisters, and, oh, bro, they don't even play. D listen, y'all check out them sisters from the dot. Y'all look up the dot the, uh, the, uh, the the divested zealot. Look up the divested zealot. Them sisters don't play, boy. Hey, listen, I can't mess with them. I'm good. I, I ain't gonna. I'm good. But it's a it's a gang of women too, so I can't do nothing with gang of women. But th th I'm good now. I'm good. But them sisters. Man, boy, but Lord have mercy, boy. You y'all listen. I said I know what I'm gonna do. I I I said I got something for these niggas. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the sisters from the divestment movement over here, and we're just gonna do a show with them. I said this y'all gonna be mad at the motherfucker, boy. Look, look, look at these bitches. These bitches hating on us. Yeah, they, they they probably got a white man at home. This and that. <laughs> I'm like yeah 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 yeah. Anyways, uh, before we go, we gotta say all praises due to the Most High, the Most Exalted, the greatest human being on the planet Earth, Mister. Al Heyman. Well, you know, I guess I gotta be like everybody else and think Al Heyman. <laughs> I can quit my job now, baby. Six figures, baby. You feel me? I'm like, but, but a name, a name. Do you have a name? Oh, nah, nah. I ain't got no name, you know. Name them names, man. <laughs> they know who they is. Name them names. <laughs> Please, the <laughs> names need to be named. <laughs> they know who they is. <laughs> the Mexican monster. Hey, man. Um, Stitch. Shout out. Shout out to Stitch Duran. Stitch did send me. He did send me the. Look like he sent me the documentary. So, um, I will be dropping that Stitch Duran video interview tomorrow. We're gonna, um, you know, just in case, just case, that's so people ain't gotta try to look at the whole show to try to find out where it's at. I'm gonna drop that Stitch Duran interview tomorrow. So as soon as this show is over with, I'm gonna get, get to editing, get to editing the interview, and then, you know, um, I'm gonna upload it tomorrow. I'm gonna have it time stamped as well. And I want you guys to know something. Anytime you see me drop them long interviews, they're always time stamped. So you can always just skip to the parts, okay? So I just want to let you know that. All my all my long interviews are time stamped. Just want to throw that out there. Um, shout out to Hood Sports and Boxing. Hey, okay. Eric Grimey. Hey, okay. Superman. Hey, okay. Uh, shout out to JC. Hey, okay. Shout out to, to the uh, inevitable D-Block. Hey, okay. Salute to Elena. Hey, okay. Shout out to Nay. With the, shout out to Nay. Hey, okay. Shout out to uh, Marty King Boxing. Hey, okay. Shout out to D-Ray Live. Hey, okay. Shout out to uh, shout out to everybody who's watching on Twitter as well. And everybody watching on uh, Instagram. I think we only had like three people watching on Instagram, but shout out to those three people. Hey, okay. Shout out to Jason Follow on Christ. Hey, okay. The lovely Miss Connie. Hey, okay. Shout out to Elena. Hey, okay. Sh shout out to La Jessica. Hey, okay. Uh, shout out to um, Pauline. Hey, okay. Dr. Paul Evans. Hey, okay. Shout out to Rick Tills, man, Southside. Hey, okay. G5. Hey. Okay. School of X Men. Hey. Okay. No Cap Entertainment. Hey. Okay. Jason. Uh. Jason. Follow on Christ. Hey. Okay. Jamie from New York. Hey. Okay. Shout out to Miss Parker. Hey. Okay. Superman. Hey. Okay. Uh. Shout out to Elena. Hey. Okay. Shout out to uh. Who else we have in the building? L. Harvey. Hey. Okay. The one, Mr. Ham. Hey. Okay. Shout out to Derek Choice. Hey. Okay. Shout out to uh. No Cap Entertainment. Hey. Okay. Kenneth Johnson. Hey. Okay. Shout out to This Is Boxing. Hey, okay. Who else we have? School of X Men. Hey, okay. Shout out to Knockdown 305. Hey, okay. Shout out to uh, shout out to uh, Set to Wombo. Hey, okay. Uh, shout out to FBA uh, Crypto Soldier. FBA Salute Fam. <laughs> yes, brother. See, brother. See, family. Let me talk to you, family. See the tethers. See when Zaddy comes around. See you have these bed winches. These bed winches. They love Zaddy. And when, when, when they get there, like Candace Owens, she got her nigga wake up card when, uh, when she just got fired from, um, 
from the, the Daily Something, right? When she got fired, she got her nigga wake up card. And now her being the tether herself, now she wants to come back to us. She wants the foundation of black Americans, the FBA to come to her support. No, go back over there with Zaddy. Hey, okay. Shout out to, uh, shout out to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I will listen, man, bro. Boy, they had me cry. Shout out to Tila, man. Hey, okay. Oh man, smoke some weed and listen to them, bro. I be laughing all damn day. Hey, okay. uh, shout out to Stephen X, man. Focus on getting some money. Focus on getting some money, man. Focus on getting some money. Don't worry about none of the other shit because at the end of the day, it's gonna always come back to the money. Anyways, y'all know what time the TI is, man. It is what it is, and don't do no arguing with these fools. You wanna argue? I can't argue with you. You mad. Look at you. You mad. I don't get paid to argue with you. Who is you? You ain't nobody. Hey, when these fighters be coming in there, what Stitch the Red say? He say, listen, man, the fighters should be at the table with the manager to find out what's going on. Now, I remember these niggas online, what do you mean he won't transparent shit? He don't need to be at the table. He need to get representation. Why he want to be at the table? Stitch the ring and say, look, no, man, no. These fighters need to be at the table so they see what's going on. So <laughs> why, he, why he want to be at the table? Why he want to be at the table? Yeah, I, I'm at home at my baby mama house sitting on this rental rent center furniture drinking Kool-Aid with no sugar, eating all the cherry cereal. See, this is a dusty. No, you at home at your baby mama house or your mama house eating all the cherry cereal Drinking all the Kool Aid, all the you know, the, uh, you know, uh, all the sugar gone, smoking Reggie, playing the PS one, two, three, four, and five all damn day. That's a dusty. True, true, true. They say they call him. They say them nigga from Blackistan. I call them Wakanda niggas. I say Wakanda. That's what I say. You get what I'm saying? I say Shea Butter Laptop Revolutionaries. I say Nick Sacks. They say black and state. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, it is what it is. You know, yeah, I'm like, yeah, man. So that's why I know why these niggas don't like me, but and I and guess I get it, I get it, I get it. And again, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. I don't want to throw nobody under the bus, but guess what? I'm throwing their ass under the bus. Who you think he is? DJ Quick? No, huh? No, I ain't saying. King Capri? I didn't say huh? Oh, you must be Jimmy Walker. Well, you ain't nothing. You don't deserve nothing, you don't get nothing. You get what I give you. I got a contract between me and you that say you do what I tell you to do. Therefore, shut the fuck, don't say that, don't speak to me, don't look at me. I tell you something. Money. You know, I just say, Blue, if I raise up, gonna be trouble. Trouble. I'm walking off. Fight, hey, that's a fighter sitting at the table with his promoter, with the promoter. Hey, man, look here, man. I want to know what's going on with the books. I want to know, look, man, what's, what's up? With, I heard y'all, what's up with them international uh, pay review uh, TV rights you got? You know, look, who, who you think it is? DJ Quick? Kid Capri? Oh, you might be Jimmy Walker. Blue, you ain't nothing. You don't deserve nothing. You don't get nothing. You get what I give you. Take what, take, listen, listen, li listen, take what they, remember, remember that? What, the, what that sound like? Sign the contract. 64 to 70, 30, 80, 20. Take what they give you. That's what Bernie Mac just said. You get what I give you. Come on, man. And you, and you listen. And you think I'm gonna listen? To, you think I'm gonna listen to these niggas? What fighter in their right mind gonna listen to these shit about the laptop revolutionaries? Who? A nigga. A nigga got that got a net worth of two figures. You a two figure nigga trying to tell an eight figure nigga how he should be doing business. Man, sit your broke ass down some goddamn well. True. 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 Anyways. Nigga, when my name come up, respect it. Let's go. Stop playing with my fucking name. All drill, y'all. Stop playing with my name. I ain't gonna say it no more. Put some respect on my name. <laughs> hey, he'll break. Wait, what did dude say to chat? He said, he'll break down to the table. Says the nigga that got a network for two figures. <laughs> He'll bring that to the table. What you bring it to the table? Oh, let's see. Reggie? Okay, check. Cereal? Okay, check. Sugar? Okay, check. Gun emojis? Okay, check. Threats? Okay, check. Drop the Addy? Okay, check. I got shooters? Okay, check. You been down come to the fight? 
Okay, check. Like, this what you bring to the table. True, true, mm. true. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, but all right, but all right, all right. I hear you, 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 man. Anyways, y'all know what time of TI is, man. Um, shout out to the tender rollers, the PYTs, and the honey dips. It is what it is. Um, salute to y'all. Man, shout, shout out to the sisters, man. Shout out to Moezy. Okay. Uh, shout out to Nay. Okay. Shout out to Tila. Shout out to Miss Parker. Shout out to Mar Elena. Shout out to Marty King Boxing, G5, D Block, Rick Timms, uh, Jamie from New York, T Seals from the ATL, the one Mr. Ham, the lovely Miss Connie, Stephen X from North Carolina, Cooking with Sir Senior, No Cap Entertainment, T800. Uh, you know, school of Ace, man. <laughs> hey, Corey Bradley, salute fam. Shout out to Corey Bradley. Never take advice from a two-figure nigga. Never. You can't tell me nothing. Dude, you, go, you, need to go put, you need to go put some milk back in the refrigerator. The churn, you eating all the churn cereal, drinking all the churn juicy juices, ate all the sugar, uh, 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 smoking, you got some of the cheapest weed, in the country, you ain't in no position, sir, to like leave women alone. That's one thing. They leave women alone. Like, like, no, like, nigga, talking about, yo, wait, he ain't bringing nothing to the table. Nigga, what you bringing to the table? Nothing. I'm bringing the table. I'm bringing the table. You know what I mean? Like, what you bringing to the table? Come on, man. Anyways, I see you guys tomorrow, man. Three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Be on the lookout for that um that uh, that uh, that interview. That interview gonna be dropping tomorrow, probably by twelve o'clock. You know my motto: Don't meet me there, beat me there. Peace. Man, I'm out of here, bro. Let's go. Come on.